Logan Carnow is in the studio. We're doing it, mate. We've been trying to do this one for a while. Hey, cheers. Cheers, by the way. When I pulled it out, I looked down. Oh, my God, dude. Like It was like a little bit past 90 degrees. He came up to me and he's <laughs> like, dude, I want to I wanna offer you something. I'll pay for everything. I took it. Things weren't going like they were supposed to. He did not text me back for like three or four weeks. You made me a lot of money. I mean, there was weekends that like I, I looked at the entry list. I'm like, dude, like if I don't make the night show this weekend, like, do I get to the next race? And I borrowed money from my mom the one year and paid it back as soon as I made my first night show. I mean, she literally just shot me a message on Instagram. If I paid you this much, would you put me on like your shroud for the weekend? And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money, man. Like I cannot go any faster than that. You got Jet Lawrence running a 54 something. I'm like, I just went as fast as I possibly can on my dirt bike. And this little is still going like five and a half seconds faster than me. I'm like, God damn, dude. See, that's why you should have privateers on the podcast more often, Jace. You get to drink beers while, while we're doing it. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by AG1. I want to give a big personal thank you for the help in getting me to the start line at Glen Helen for the World Vets. It was a real bucket list thing for me, and I spent all of 2023 training for it. I may have skipped a couple of runs and had a few off days at the track, but one thing I didn't skip all year was a morning started with AG1. Consistency is everything in health and fitness and one scoop of AG1 with water first thing in the morning, every morning played a massive role in getting me on the start line. I feel more energized, I have better digestion and I have a higher sense of general well-being as a result. That's because every scoop includes things such as B vitamins for energy support, probiotics for gut support, and vitamin C and zinc for immune support. And while all of these attributes make AG1 a real no-brainer, you can try it and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash gypsytales. And keep an eye out for our World Vets content dropping here on our YouTube channel soon. I'm at a gypsy. Well, Logan Carnow is in the studio, live and in the in the flesh. We're uh, we're doing it, mate. We've been trying to do this one for a while. I know it's. Uh, I think you you hit me up last year when I was out here in California. And yeah, yeah. I don't know for some reasons. For some reason, it didn't work out. But um, I think I was in Dubai at the time. Oh yeah, maybe which that was I it. think it like there was a limited window of yeah. time that we could actually uh, that we could actually do shows. But we're here now. We're here now. And a uh, bit of a unexpected year for you had a bit of an injury but yeah. on the flip side gives you some time in california yeah i wouldn't i'm not stoked on that <laughs> i don't uh honestly i absolutely hate california it's not yeah. not my scene um when i grew up in ohio it's i mean i grew up on like 50 acres yeah. kind of out in the middle of nowhere and got walked outside naked if i wanted to right so um cali's not really my vibe i mean i'm out here because i got to do sur or um i had surgery out here in uh physical therapy with yeah. uh, steve navarro yeah and yeah Doing it, doing out here though, I guess. So we actually, I, I, I'm not sure if they're still a sponsor, but we have a mutual sponsor, or have had a mutual sponsor in the past. And it's not only fans, fist, fist hand. Mm. Do you still run fist? Sam. Yeah, you, I don't. Uh, you have to run the O'Neills. Yep, yep. I've been O'Neill the last couple of years. Yeah, but dude, Bugger. Sam, Sam's my boy. I know. He's I, I love man, Sam. Right? He, he hit me. He hit me up before, uh, before this year, and. We couldn't work anything out because I was with O'Neill, but yeah, I'm here for. I love the fist gloves. Yeah, they. I, I preach it. They're not. They're not that big in America compared yeah. to what they should be. I'm yeah, slowly. I agree. I'm slowly starting to change it, <laughs> but I, like I say, it'll actually be in the ads before this podcast. But I just say sure. like, most companies make gloves as an afterthought. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, we got the gear set. Yep, sweet. It's like all the R and D goes into the pants and mm -hmm. the jerseys and. That company just makes gloves. They're, well, they make some socks, and but like the yeah. full the full focus of that company is gloves, and they're so good. And there's been a couple times where I have run other gloves, and I'm like, I fucking hate this. I'm going back to my fist gloves. So they're good, dude. I was with them. Uh, I used to ride for PRMX. 
yeah uh, kawasaki team yeah. um he's basically my second dad dude he's done so much for me over, over the over the years um and we ran fist with them and Sam was always great to me, dude. Uh, I never experienced like after or uh, nightlife with Sam. I'm sure it would be fun, but uh, oh, you never got to party no, with him. No, never. Well, he's a changed man these days. Is he? Yeah, he's always oh, wiped up now. Isn't yeah, he? big, oh, yeah. big time, bro. Yeah, 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 big time. So. Sam's cool as fuck, though. Yeah, he, dude, he slash we used to go pretty hard. Really? Yeah, back in the day. But he's a he's a G. That's awesome. In every sense of the word. I, I want to go to Australia so bad. I feel like it's like I was actually just talking to my buddy Hunter Cross last night. I live with Hunter Cross. Oh um, yeah. And we were watching some, some, uh, some, I don't know what it was, something in Australia. And I was like, man, I feel like I'd fit in so well in Australia because everybody just seems like so chill. You're like, drinking they don't give a Modelo a right now. Yeah, like, dude. yes, you would fit yeah. in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just seems like they're just trying to have a good time out there and nobody's in a rush to go anywhere. And yeah. I mean, I may be completely wrong, but that's just like what it seems like. Every time I meet like Australian people, like they just seem so cool and chill. Yeah. It's funny. Like my wife's not from Australia and she's been living there the last few years with me and she just loves the pace. Like, that's the thing she always talks about. Because for me, like, I take it for granted. It's fairly normal, obviously. I yeah. just grew up there, you know. But, yeah, we'll be we'll be walking down the road and she's like, see that? That's Australia right there. Like, the dude's got a, a sweater on and no <laughs> shoes. <laughs> it's like, no yeah, one gives a fuck, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's true. Like, it is just very laid back. I feel like the people are laid back. I feel like you'd have a pretty good fan base out there too i, I think i think, I think so. you'd do well there i i think so too i actually um one of the main kawi teams out there actually hit me up um it's a team that luke Clout, empire yeah 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 luke, yeah. Yeah, luke clout's riding for him now um they did uh they contacted me over instagram and um said something about possibly doing something for next year and i thought that was that was sick they actually wanted to be a possible sponsor of mine this year too so they were uh, really yeah they seemed super cool and it would be sweet to go over there and do a couple of super cross races i feel like i could do decent over there i mean maybe maybe top five guy five six seven guy over there would be be cool yeah yeah i mean it's definitely the who was i talking to someone messaged me the other day and they were asking why australians do so well in supercross and i think Australia is probably honestly the second best supercross country in the world. Yeah. Like in terms of having a series that goes around the country, factory teams support it. There's practice tracks that guys race at. There's a split season. There's motocross season. There's supercross season. Like we're very, very similar to the U S in, in that regard. And it's yeah. been like that forever, you know, like Chad Reed grew up racing supercross like in the eighties and stuff like that. And then there was like the, the Moss generation, like the mm -hmm. Moss brothers, they grew up racing supercross. Like we always had stadium crosses and stuff like that. So I actually think Australia is a pretty great country for supercross. And it's always had a history of bringing Americans over to kind of like fill the spots on the gates with like higher end talent, you know? Yeah. I mean, the tracks look pretty good too. I mean, I mean, obviously maybe a tiny bit less than like the AMA series, but I mean, dude, they look fun, man. Like, like I said, it would be so much fun to go over there and hit a couple of the races and experience Australia and on the golf, the Gulf Coast, right? That's what Gold it is. Gold Coast. Gold Coast, yeah. yeah Gold yeah. Coast. It looks so much fun over there. I would, uh, I would love to go over there. Yeah. Have you been like done any international stuff like racing? No, not really. I did a, I did a couple when I was a kid. Have you got a passport? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Gone to Mexico quite a few times. Okay. <laughs> all, all inclusives, you know, those, those are fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I was a kid, I did, but um. Yeah, nothing since I've been, uh, like, even on big bikes. Yeah. It'd be cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're probably the <clears throat> a good guy for that, too, in terms yeah. of, like, plenty fast enough and also having the freedom with, like, sponsors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's it's cool doing my own thing. Like, I can literally do, like, whatever the fuck I want, right? So, <laughs> it's... Like, I mean, I did the team thing forever, and it, it was great. I rode for PRMX, which was great. I rode for uh, Bubba Pauly's team. Yeah, um, yeah. His team was amazing. Um, but, man, dude, ever since uh, I rode for another guy, kind of effed me over. We'll, I'm sure we'll get into that. But um, ever since I started doing my own thing, it's it's just, dude, I have, like, not a care in the world. Like, on Friday, if I want to I mean, we'll do whatever I want. I mean, I don't have to go to team dinners and all this jazz. I don't have any obligations. Um, all I got to do is keep my sponsors happy and – and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Like, I would literally never go back. I mean, like myself and Kevin Moran's has got it figured out. And I yeah. mean, we're able to find a find a way to make a decent living 
I mean, doing what we want to do. It's it's rad. Yeah, yeah. There's <clears throat> it's been really cool watching the resurgence of the privateer over the last couple of years. And I always talk about Moran's. I always talk about you when I reference yeah. these dudes that have figured out their own niche. Like I feel like Moran's is probably a guy that would like fit in on a team and kind of yes. want to do that. But definitely, I was one. I was wondering like with how well things are going and your type of character and personality, like, even, like, do you even fucking want to ride on a factory team? You know, no, like, I, I mean, obviously, I mean, it, it would be hard to say no if I did get an opportunity on one, which I mean, I've been pro now for fuck, dude, I mean, almost 10 years now. Right. So realistically, it's probably not going to happen. So I'm going to enjoy the last few years of my career, just having a good time, man. I mean, I mean, I work my ass off, I do, but I mean, I don't really show that shit on Instagram, right? Because it's like, you know, it gives a fuck. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, you want me to post that I'm on a stationary bike or I'm at Planet Fitness? Like, the people that follow me don't give a fuck to see that, right? They want to see me <laughs> at the after party. Um, yeah. Uh, but no, dude, it's, it's good, man. Life is good right now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I love that you're just fully cool with that yeah. because it just, it doesn't always have to be. <laughs> fucking the next jet lawrence like it just doesn't you don't that's not the only way to do it and it's like it's cool that i mean you're probably making more money than like i'm sure there's a factory 250 rider that you're making more money than you know probably and and it's like sick live the lifestyle be the dude you want to be don't go to the team dinners like go to after (laughs) you know what i mean like just fucking do your thing yeah dude i like i said man i'm so lucky it's uh kind of fell into the whole thing right but um i've always cared about social media and stuff like that and i feel like that's why i've kind of acquired like a cool following um i literally just try to be cool to everybody Mm. like i mean there's so many people that i just like you get a bit of success and then they just feel like they're they're up here and you're down here and like Mm. i will never ever think like that so many people like it just absolutely drives me crazy man and i'm with you bro and every single person that walks over to my pit i try to give them the time of day i mean it's Sometimes I have a lot of people over there, so it's hard when I'm trying to, like, watch practice or something or stuff like that. But, man, I, I try to do everything I can to, to be cool to every single person that walks over and, sh- and shows me attention. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like, I mean, <clears throat> I agree. It's the it's the only way to be. Like, I got, cool guys. I got, like, legit friends. Like, there's a an example of a guy, right? I don't know if you, he fucking probably talks to you on Instagram. Balin. You know Balin? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So, like, I've never met that motherfucker <laughs> in my life, right? <laughs> Balin's a shit, dude. dude I, I, I know Balin really well. I talk to him all the time. I've never met him, but like <laughs> he started listening to the podcast and he would like share shit and he'd like send me rants based on the takes that I'd have or like oh, I agree with this, this guy. Like, and he was just a cool, fun, entertaining guy that I yes, would fucking talk to solely because of the podcast. And it's like that was when <laughs> fuck all people watched or listened. And the dude texts me, like he messages me down. It's the, the same shit. Like there's no reason... To fucking change no, based on anything. Absolutely. That's not. a cool fucking guy who yeah. I find very fun and entertaining. <laughs> you know, and he's actually coming to our gypsy race, which is going oh, to be really? pretty sick. Like, I'll actually get to meet the dude. But oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I mean, there's so many cool motherfuckers in this world, you know? Yeah. Not I, everyone has to be like some <laughs> cool, famous, like fucking whatever to be a dope dude. Yeah, totally. He um he actually drove the rig for, for PRMX, he I did. believe, for, he did. for a little bit. And I got to know him pretty well, pretty yeah. well from them. And, um, <clears throat> yeah dude every time i see bill and he's like what's up dude how are you bro what up <laughs> he's just got so much energy dude it's uh i love that guy every time i see him <laughs> yeah, no, he's gonna, he'll probably be fired up when i when i tell him that i'm on the pod oh that's sick yeah no he's just one of those cool guys so yeah i mean i just i kind of know what you're saying you know like yeah i feel like some people maybe change a little bit you know given the circumstances or whatever but it's like i don't know i'm with you i don't i i don't see how it, how it changes things so many people do though. I don't know why. Like you, you, you're no better than the next guy just because mm. your results are a little bit better or you have a little more followers than somebody else. Like, I just I, I'm not here for it. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. So how did the how did it all start for you in terms of like getting this freedom that you have now? Uh it was kind of. Um, I don't know. It's it's a weird story. Uh, so I rode for a guy. So I rode for PRMX for a long time. I rode for Bubba Pauly's team. Everything was great with both of those teams. Um, and then this money guy, um, I kind of had a big party at my house. Probably had like, I don't know, 50, 60 people there. And I met this dude at the track. 
and he seemed super cool. Um, and I was pretty, pretty fucking tuned up and he came up to me and he's like, dude, I want to, I want to offer you something. He's like, so I'll give you the so-and-so money. Um, I'll pay for everything. Um, you just, you know, promote my company and, um, I'll do this, this, and this for you. And I actually ended up calling, uh, Bubba Pauly, who I was supposed to ride for that year. And I was like, man, I have this opportunity. Um, and he was, he was happy for me. Um, I ended up taking it. It was a risk obviously because Bubba's program is pretty, pretty strong. Um, and I took it and about seven or eight rounds into the series, I kind of started noticing things weren't going like they were supposed to. He did not text me back for like three or four weeks. Mm. Um, the credit card was turned off that I was supposed to be using for travel, entry fees, uh, hotels. And yeah, so that happened. It was right after Daytona Supercross of 2022. Um, I get a text from him about this big, literally accusing me of everything under the sun. And um, luckily, we have a very good family friend who's a very, very good lawyer. Um, I sent it to them, and she's like, is any of this true? I'm like, no, none of it's true. Like, <laughs> I just, I, I'm a nice guy. Like, I'm not going to fuck anybody over, especially somebody who's paying me very well and doing all this shit for me. Um the dude's an absolute kook. Uh, I actually saw him at a couple of the lo- he he he's local, so I actually saw him at some of the local tracks, and yeah, I, I try to make his life a living hell anytime I see him. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that happened, I made a post on social media, basically that, um, basically what was going on, and was able to raise enough money to buy a bike and get my travel expenses covered for the rest of the year, which was unbelievable. Um, How, how'd you do that? Like through... Yeah, I p- just made a video on Instagram yeah. explaining everything that happened. I, I told him that my main sponsor fucked me over and um, he ended up taking the dirt bikes back from me. He gave me a van to use. He took the van back from me. Obviously, he took yeah, it off so the credit card. Like, I literally went from, felt like I was going to make some good money this year to literally nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so after that, I made that post. It did well. I made enough money to go buy a new dirt bike, actually. So it happened on a Tuesday, I believe he texted me. And he was, like, threatening me and all this bullshit. He's like, if you don't have my shit back in Ohio by Thursday, there's going to be, there's going to be big issues. Uh, there's going to be police involved and shit. And I'm like, <laughs> they when don't I, when, give a fuck, right, bro. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but when he initially sent this, he sent it like professional. I was like, "Oh fuck! Like, am I is there actually? Am I actually gonna get like messed up?" Yeah, yeah, I'm like. But then I was talking to my lawyer and everything, and like all was good. And he's like, uh, "Yeah, if you if you don't have it back by Thursday, there's gonna be some big issues. Cops will be involved and all this bullshit." And so, I had this good idea that I should just to get back at him. I'll tell him where it is. But I'm just gonna leave all the shit in Florida and go race in Detroit the next weekend. <laughs> just, I mean, I could have brought it up there, but fuck that. Why would I help him out, right? <laughs> so I sent him an address. I put all the shit there, safe. It was actually at a friend's house. Um, and I guess he ends up driving down, and police got involved. It was a whole thing. I, mean, I didn't do anything wrong, but uh, my buddy's dad was there, and he uh, he gives me a call. It's like fucking two or three in the morning, and and he shows up and like cops are there and all this shit and and he ends up speaking to the police and all this shit and uh, all was good. I like I said I I did nothing wrong. He was the he was the dipshit that showed up to private property and all that jazz, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up getting his shit back. I don't know how, but um so I'm driving home on a Wednesday. I end up calling up my uh, calling my local dealership, uh, Kennedy's. They're just a local dealership about 10 minutes from my house. They've they've helped me out for for a long time. I just bought my bikes from this year too, actually. Um, and I walk in there early Friday morning. They open the dealership an hour early just so I could get in there. I was racing Detroit on a Saturday, so I, I no walked way. in there on a Friday morning at eight o'clock. They open at nine o'clock, um, and she helped me out so much. She even followed me to the bank so I could pay for the bike. Um, That's awesome. What's the name of the dealership dude, again? Kennedy Cycles in O'Leary, Ohio. Uh, it's it's a very out. small dealership, man, but they are they help everybody out if they can they're not like i said they're not a huge dealership but man they they do everything that they possibly can for everybody they're 
amazing. Oh, shit. That's she, pray, she prays for me every weekend. She texts me every single Friday. She even after I got hurt, she was at, um, I believe it was like Bible study. And she sent a video um, of everybody there saying a prayer for me after I got hurt, which is which is fucking cool. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, dude. Um, then I had four buddies at my house um, at like nine o'clock and we were like transferring all the parts off dipshit's bike onto my bike. And what a fucking nightmare, bro. Dude, it was a whole thing. And I had, I had press day that day, finally, for the first time of the year, first press day. And obviously, I missed press day. I got to the stadium at like 6 o'clock at night. And <sighs> it was a whole thing, dude. And then the next day, fuck, dude, it was it was a struggle during practice riding a brand new bike. I was fucking doing heat cycles out there on the bike, right? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to learn the track. But um, ended up making the main event, dude. And it was insane, man. Like That's so sick. The crowd was going nuts like i felt like i was like ken roxon out there because i think so many people kind of jumped onto my and story that the, week yeah, yeah yeah and then they they saw that happen and like i have videos like people sending me from like the bleachers and like everybody's like this for yeah, me yeah, so yeah, sick. yeah and then yeah dude after that weekend um i went to indian up winning the lcq with the next race too so man i was on a high at that point i had some really cool sponsors too um so Hannah Ray was, uh, she's a very successful, like, OnlyFans girl. She does very well on OnlyFans. Yeah, okay. So this is where I, I remember starting yeah. this. So it was around it was around this time, I I think maybe the Detroit round, I, I remember you getting in the main and it being a big deal. Was it your first main of the year? When you'd gotten in more, hadn't you? <clears throat> it was my second. Okay. I yeah. made Dallas the Triple Crown. Uh, okay, yeah. So... But yeah, and no, I remember that, and then I remember like that next week with the the OnlyFans chick. So yeah. how how did that all come about? <laughs> um, she literally just uh, shot me a message on Instagram, and she was like, um, <clears throat> "If I if I paid you, well, she was like, I'm sorry for everything that happened, right?" And then um, she's like, "If I paid you this much, would you put me on like your shroud for the weekend and just give me some publicity?" I'm like, "Hell yeah! I mean, that's a lot of money, man. Hell yeah! I'm, I got nothing right now. <laughs> like that would be awesome." Um, she sent the money, no questions asked, like. Like, she didn't even know who I was. Like, she had all the trust in me um, that I was going to do everything that I said I was going to do. And um, it worked. <laughs> she got a lot of publicity out of that, and she saw her uh, her stuff go up quite a bit. Did you hear how many people signed up or anything? Why? Um, well, she told me a certain number, and then she was like, it was like three or four times for the week that, that she usually does. Fuck, that's pretty sick. So what she paid me, I think she made a little more. Yeah, a little more but hey, that. that's biz. That's good Fuck, biz. Yeah, that's absolutely. good business. I, I was so pumped when she told me that. But hey, that and that's what like <clears throat> that's all right, right here. Yeah. For anyone listening to this, that's the fucking secret. Yeah. Make more people make someone more money. Yep. Than they paid you. Exactly. That's the fucking secret of business. That's yeah. the secret of life. Yeah. If you like, you someone pays like a sponsor. We just sign motorsport. All right, they're paying me a certain amount of money. I'm gonna try to double it for them. Yep, that's it. That's business. Hundred percent. If you, if, if you a sponsor did. sees no upside to yep. sponsoring you, yeah, I mean, why are they gonna sponsor you again, right? Man, I have people though, <clears throat> still to this day, that talk to me and they're like, "Oh, how do you do this? How can I get this deal? Like, this sponsor turned me down. I'm like, what did you offer them? Oh, I just told them I wanted this much money. Like, <laughs> for what? <laughs> exactly. For what? Like, yep. why? Why would you do that? Where yeah. is the value? And it's like, it's the same as an employee. Like, I got employees and they cost X amount of money yep. and they need to return X amount of money. Exactly. Otherwise, there's no fucking point. It's like, yeah. if you can just think about that in all facets of your life as an employee, as a boss, as a fucking businessman, as a sponsor, as a relate in a relationship, like with my wife, like, she should want to get more from me than she gives to me. And I should want to get more from, you know what I mean? Yeah. And totally. it's like, everyone fucking wins. Yep. Literally, you just, you crack the code, you know? There's so many, like, I'm not going to name any names, but there's a couple privateer guys out there that it's like, oh, fuck, dude, poor me, man. I don't have enough money to go racing. Like, why do you not have enough money? You put in zero fucking work to go race. Maybe you make enough money to get a good lap time, but you can't fucking race a heat race um you do nothing for your sponsors you you show up to the bike with you show up to the shack with a dirty bike like sponsors look at this shit man like you gotta you gotta make sure you have a, a clean presence at the race uh make sure your bike looks good i mean it's just basic shit right and yeah and try to promote your sponsors as best you can like it's not that hard i mean dude how long does it take to make an instagram post for a sponsor 
fucking 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I, like you said, dude, I, I, I don't understand how it's that difficult. Yeah. You help out the people that help you, right? Yeah. And just do more. Like, yeah. under promise, over deliver. 100%. Like, just, you can't fuck it up then. That's what Bubba Pauly's team did for me. Yeah, I, really? Yeah, I can, yeah, swear. Yeah, he was, he under promised, over delivered everything that he ever did for me. So, dude, literally nothing but amazing things to say about that team. That's awesome. All right, let's Great. get in, let's get into that. I want to keep hearing the, the, yeah. the, the story here. So, she gives you the cash. <laughs> You're like, fuck yeah, this is unreal. This is that. This is that OnlyFans money. And then you make her a bunch bunch more money. So there's like a little bit of a business model here. The yeah. fans seem to love it. It like kind of went yeah. viral. So where does it go from there? So after Detroit, I uh, was Indy. And sh- I asked her if she had any interest in doing anything with me for the next race again. And she did. She paid me the same amount for the next race. Um, but we... Got a little bit edgier. I was like, "What if we like put like, like an animated picture of like your ass on my bike or something like that?" She's like, "Oh yeah." So like, <laughs> so like she's like kind of like sent me like a photo, and I sent it to like my graphic guy, and he did like an animation of it. Um, yeah, I don't know if the sport was too stoked on that, but a lot of people did like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was sick, dude. Like I did well again that week, and I ended up winning the LCQ, which was fucking insane. Um, and yeah, dude, it just went from there. Then uh, I had a bunch of OnlyFans girls kind of hit me up because they saw her success from it. Um, and not only OnlyFans girls, I mean businesses and stuff like that. But yeah, but yeah, after that happened, I was like, man, I, I think I can do something kind of on my own <clears throat> instead of having to... I mean, it is nice kind of having a team. There is a lot of people like that enjoy that route. I mean, you show up to the track, everything's done, good to go. Um, people don't realize, like, I mean, like we were talking before this podcast happened, like... I mean, people think you interview somebody and you post on YouTube and that's it, right? Like, there's, I mean, look at the studio, man. Like, this shit just doesn't happen overnight. Like, and it's the same thing with, like, running a little team. I guess, I mean, my little team. Um, I mean, you hit up so many sponsors. Like, you hit up, I mean, see if you can get a little bit of money from a bar company. Like, you hit up four bar companies, right? And then you hit up, I mean, you need brake pads. See if you, see you can get the most brake pads from. You hit up four brake pad companies. Like, it's so much shit that, like, people have no idea about. It's uh, it's a lot. And then so you kind of have the thought though where you're like, all right, I could, I could, you know, there's a good business model here. Like maybe I could kind of go on my own and then you kind of like start looking further into that process or? Yeah. I, um, after, after the 2022 season, I ended up, you know, making a nice little chunk of change towards the end of the season after all that BS happened and um so did it work out better than if he stayed on board 100 yeah like it, this was like it was a, a blessing in disguise it's like a chain reaction yes. right like this one shitty thing happened yeah. that kind of like laid the foundation for the yeah. next couple of years i'm so lucky as to how it happened actually uh if that dipshit's watching this i would i, I hope he is watching this um i actually went up to him and we kind of got into a little altercation but um as i was kind of starting to walk away i just said um i just want you to know that that you made me a lot of money for fucking me over. I just just want to thank you. And I went up and I tried to like shake his hand, and he's like, "Get the fuck out of here, dude." That's all you know. I just felt good to say that. <laughs> man, I say this all the time to people that are in my life. I say the best fucking revenge is living a gangster life without a thought for the people that fucked you over. Mm-hmm. Like I was telling a story to my wife the other day of something that happened between like me and a friend, right? And at the time, I was pretty off it, and I was like, you know what, whatever. And it's like, I still see the person, I'm, like, I'm around, I'm living my life, I'm doing well, and I just hold no hard feelings, because yeah. again, it was one of those things where it's like, my life changed, it got way better, yeah. fucking cheers, bro, like, thank you. You know, the best revenge is just to put the <clears throat> shit in the rear vision mirror and just sail off into the sunset, living yeah. a fucking dope ass yeah. life. You're definitely right. <laughs> I still hold a little bit of hard feelings, not just because I don't care that it happened. I just, like, the dude is just such a piece of shit. Like, yeah. anytime I'm around him, I'm just like, oh, like, how can you live like that, man? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't get it. No, but, there's, yeah. there's people like that. Um, I get it. And so, that, yeah, so then you basically like, okay, this is kind of the way forward. When did you get the attention of the actual OnlyFans guy? It's OnlyFans Dylan, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Um. So, shit, I want to say it was like, maybe middle of September 
2022. I um so I have an agent I was telling you um helps me out a ton with uh with sponsors and stuff like that. Um we, we honestly really didn't even think about reaching out to the to the to the corporate company of OnlyFans. It just seemed like a bit of a stretch. Obviously it's never been done, so I mean, it's kind of crazy to think, but um we ended up reaching out, finding an email, just shot like the basic email <laughs> info at <laughs> literally com, yeah. literally i think that is the email actually yeah. <laughs> um it was like uh yeah i sent that email I'm, i remember i was laying in bed i remember clear as day it was like 10 30 at night um and i woke up and i had a follow from 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 the only fan dylan the, the only fans guy and i was like and i looked at his i was like really looking at his profile i was like is this actually legit um, I didn't, I had an email back um, from him and it was CC'd with um, somebody else from OnlyFans and they're like, yeah, we'd like to set up a Zoom meeting and see what we can do. I'm like, holy shit, dude, I called my agent. I'm like, dude, like, I think I might actually have something set up here. Um, had a Zoom meeting with them, um, <clears throat> uh, sent a proposal to them and had a signed contract pretty damn quick after that. It was literally insane, man. Like, I couldn't even believe it. I remember the last, the, the phone call, he was like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. I'm like, Oh my god, this like life changing man is good on you, bro. Thank you. It's, yeah, dude. Like, it's a lot of work though, man. Like, obviously, like it's it doesn't just fall in your lap, right? I mean, yeah. you gotta you gotta put the time in. Man, I, I had <clears throat> honestly like I had I've had very similar experience, you know, like where you kind of just get a phone call that's like basically life changing. Yeah, you know, like just the the stress. Like, I think about. I think about this a lot too these days. It's just like as I'm old, like when you get older and it's all you ain't on. that old. But I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm old compared to you. But it's like I'm married. I got yeah. business that has employees. Like I'm definitely, I'm not, I don't feel like a kid as much as I used to, if that makes sense. It's kind of sure. like a, yeah. a weird transition. I'm already feeling like that. And I'm yeah, it'll get, it'll, it'll get like more and more like that, you know. But it's like it, I feel like it's quite hard to be a man. <laughs> these days you know what i mean like yeah. an adult man with a bunch of responsibilities <clears throat> like actually with uh like things you have to be accountable for you know and that's what you're saying is like you get this deal and it's like yeah it's life-changing and you get you're getting some good money out of it and it's like so much pressure off but it's also like so much pressure yeah. on you know like just because you sign this deal like you still have to fulfill everything that they want you to fulfill, right? So you gotta make sure you're talking about the company, right? Making sure you're doing everything that you have to in the contract. I mean, <clears throat> it's uh, oh, well, like even before amazing, this, though. you you were like, oh, when when do you want to do the show? Like, I just gotta make sure I get an OnlyFans shirt, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah. just even it's even those things, but it's yeah, I think it's it's cool to get a phone call like that, something that you've worked so hard <clears> for, and it's like it's a very clear moment where i'm sure you had like a bit of a sigh of relief like it obviously it comes with these new problems and it comes with new challenges but it's like fuck i actually can't yeah. believe that there's this many things that i'm not gonna have to worry about now yeah it was insane like i remember it clear as day i was standing in my mom's backyard i got a phone call and i'm like he was like will you do this for this i'm like yeah yeah, that, that's, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we could do that. And I hung up the phone call, dude. I just like fell into tears. I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, unbelievable, man. Like, <clears throat> like all the work you put in with racing and, you know, building your social following and just, I mean, all that shit, years and years and years. And just to, for one phone call, right? To, to, to change your life. It's insane. And then to, uh, to be back with them with, for another year is just fucking unbelievable. So, for the people that are listening that might not understand how that can change your life, like what does it do for you? What does it allow you to do? Like what does it change? Yeah. So <clears throat> I think my first pro race was 2014 or 15. God damn, dude, I'm fucking getting old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but up until 2021, when I was riding for Bubba Polly's team, he paid for everything. I kept all my purse money, which I did. I did pretty good for that year. Um, but up until then, I literally, dude, like my, I had an ex-girlfriend, dude, and she, uh, she, she had to pay for a rent in California, uh, going into the 2020 year. Um, I was broke as broke can possibly get, man. And I, I mean, I borrowed money from my mom the one year and I'm 
paid it back as soon as I made my first night show. I mean, just to make a little bit of money and, and man, dude, just to go into the year and knowing you like, you don't have to stress like little shit like that. Not, not little shit, but, um, <clears throat> it's just such a sigh of relief, right? So yeah. paying for all your entry fees right off the bat, knowing you don't have to stress about paying for a hotel, paying for your flights, paying for your hotel, everything, paying yeah. for my buddy drives my van all around the country to help me out. I'm getting all my stuff to the races. I'm, I'm able to pay him good. Um, and it's just like such a sigh of relief literally for everything in my life. It's yeah. dude. I like, I, I don't know. I'm literally like speechless because I just still like can't believe that I like the support that I do. It's yeah. I'm just so stoked. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I've, I fully get it, man. Like, and for people that wouldn't live, like the way that you live. And I think I can relate in a unique way. Like the podcast is kind of a race team. <laughs> you know what I kind mean? Kind of a race what? It's kind of a race team. Oh yeah. It's kind of, a, I've got, it's like the studio <laughs> yeah. itself is like a race bike. Yeah. Like, or the rig. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it is, you yeah. know? So it's like all these microphones, it's like, that's top of the line shit. Like these mic arms, like each one of these is probably like a thousand dollars, maybe like, eleven hundred dollars for like the mic and then this mic arm and then the table and then the lights and then the audio recording and then the computers and then the hard drives and then the editors computers and then that like you've just got like this space yeah and then this the space that you so it's like you've got this constantly evolving like a race bike it's new brake pads it's new suspension it's new oil it's like it's it's a thing that has components you know and it's like you're just in this constant process of like using, replacing, using, replacing, trying to make it better, trying to tweak it, trying to, and then there's you and there's all the things associated with you and the drug. So you, you've just got like this little ecosystem. It's it's like a fucking terrarium or like a fish tank. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, totally. you got like, you got to get the pH right and you've got to make sure that there's this type <laughs> of food and these fish get on with this fish. Like yeah. it's a delicate kind of thing that you're balancing in. So the way that you would have been, this is from my, I guess, me trying to like project my experiences onto you, like you are living almost month to month, which is like almost race to race. So it's like, fuck, I need to make the night show because I've yes. got to pay for these entries and then I got to pay for <clears throat> these flights and fuck every day that I don't pay for flights, the flights are getting more expensive. The hotels are getting more expensive. So it's like, you yeah. just end up living like just with this constant, overhead pressure of the next race the next race the next race the next race and and the next race depends wholly and solely on the race that comes before it and for us like at times the podcast has been like that where it's like just month to month we're just like i'm hoping i get enough money this month to like redo all the shit next month and like get the new computer and all the hard drives are getting full or blah 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 you know so to have someone come in like only fans and to give you a check that you can then go like no matter what i can race this year yeah i can go to the races <clears throat> i can pay all my flights in advance just paying all of your flights in advance probably saves you like three thousand four thousand dollars yeah paying you know there's it's so many little things that get made better by getting like this kind of deal so i fully fully understand and appreciate like what that would have been like to go through yeah dude like i said man that shit was life-changing it was it was amazing i mean i know i said earlier in the podcast there's there's privateers that um that basically don't take advantage of their social following and stuff like that but i i was that guy for a second i I did have a little bit of a following and i i was lazy right I, i mean i didn't i didn't put any work into trying to find outside sponsors i I had a team that would take my bike and, <clears throat> and that was pretty much it. I mean, I mean, there was weekends that like, I, I looked at the entry list. I'm like, shit, dude, like if I don't make the night show this weekend, like, how the fuck do I get to the next race? I mean, maybe I can call my parents. I don't really want to call my parents, <laughs> but, but, um, no, nah, dude, there was, there was some tough times. Like I said, man, um, but it, uh, I feel like it all, all makes you all makes you kind of who you are today. Yeah. And so why do you think people gravitated to you in the way that they did because it's not like just posting consistently will like guarantee you a following. You've got to be a person that people want to follow and people fucking love what you got going on. Like, what do you think it is about you versus other guys? I think I'm just real. Like, 
I mean, people, I mean, there's so many guys that, like, you see at, like, after parties and shit like that. Like, they're never going to post that, right, dude? Like, if I'm at an after party, like, I'm going to post that guy's at the after, like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I just post whatever I want. Like, I mean, if I'm out, if I'm out having a beer, I'm, if I'm down in Mexico having a good time, if I'm out on my boat, like, I mean, I post exactly what I'm doing. Like, there's so many people that, like, you know, they go to the after parties and stuff, but then they only post that they're at the gym. I'm like, nobody gives a fuck, dude. Nah. Like, we all go to the gym. We all go on road bikes. We all run. We all ride. Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I post more stuff that people maybe can relate to, maybe in a way. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe and, that's it. And so who is the average Logan Carnell fan, would you describe? How would you describe <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a party guy. Um. Yeah, we usually have a few guys come up every weekend, and they're 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 screaming my name and you know double fisting and nah, I think that's cool because if I wasn't racing, I'd probably be that guy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just couldn't relate. Yeah, what's the what's the current best city to hit an after party at on the schedule? Oof, you can't beat Daytona, man. Daytona, Razzles, Razzles is fun. Yeah. Actually, dude, last year I did go to Razzles on. Thursday, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that before the race, but I did. <laughs> you're the, yeah, you're your team boss, bro. You can say <laughs> yeah, whatever the true, fuck yeah, you yeah. want. Yeah, so we went there Thursday. I mean, it was pretty fun, but then um, I believe Sunday, Sunday night. I don't even think it went out Saturday, and I was so smoked. I ended up making the main that night, and that dude, I was just exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe from Thursday, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, but we ended up going out Thursday, and we went to Main Street, which is like where all like the biker bars and stuff are. Yeah. It was so much fun. I mean, there's girls dancing in cages. Um, I did this shot where you take a shot and some chick like slaps you on the face. And I don't know, dude. It was a whole thing. It was so much fun. Daytona's fun. Seattle's Seattle's fun. Seattle's really? actually underrated. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. There's a bunch. Like, there's people that go to Seattle after a party that you probably wouldn't expect. Really? It's fun. Where is it normally? Oh, is it changed? Shit. Or? No, it's it's been at the same place for the last like three years. Really? They have a, a, a like a bowl there. So there was yeah. like four of us. Ah, I'll throw some guys under the bus here. Uh, me, Cartwright, Cade. I don't know if Marines. Nah, I don't think Marines was there. Probably not. Um, but like we all like saw like who could go the longest on the bull. I think <laughs> I got last. I suck on that thing. But um, there was some higher up name guys there too. But I don't want to call them out. But it's so much fun, dude. Like yeah, like the amount of connections that I've made. Yeah, going bro. out. Yeah, like it's insane. Like, so, 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 so many people I know now, like, factory guys from Cali, factory guys from Yamaha, like, I mean, like, I'm, I'm walking, track walking, people are like, how do you know that guy? I'm like, I got hammered with that dude, like, a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh, man, there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of connections and, like, all right, this is what people might not understand about partying, right? Yeah. There's a lot of business deals that are going down, there's a lot of fucking, I'm sure a lot of contracts that have been signed, and... <laughs> Because yeah. maybe that's, maybe that's a little almost, higher than they should have been because of a little yeah, couple of these. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a real thing, and so that's the most extreme example of it, right? But then drinking beers, getting hammered, telling like there's there's a there's a thing there, like yeah, that's a totally. it's a real thing. And if you can mm. be a trustworthy enough guy to be in that situation, and you can you keep your <laughs> word and you, you be cool, that's a dude that you know you can trust. So totally. there is. More value to going to an after party than one might assume. Totally. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, it obviously loosens you up a little bit. So everyone's got their guard down a little bit. And then you can, like, really kind of get to know people. And, uh, you know, they don't have their suit and tie on there, right? So they can kind of be themselves and you get to know them a little bit better than you would when they're uh, standing behind Factory Coward or Factory Yamaha. Yeah, and you got the mask on and everyone's fucking, you know, (laughs) everyone's watching you and you're trying to be cool. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So Seattle's lit. Where else is lit? Uh, You know what was good for, what was my favorite back in the day was Phoenix. Phoenix? Bro, shit, really? I've never went out in Phoenix. Bro. So, well, Scottsdale (laughs) specifically. Dude, there is so many bad chicks in Scottsdale. out of control, (laughs) bro. How far is that from Phoenix? I don't even know. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, it's it's close though, right? Oh, is it? I think close-ish. it's close. Yeah, I've been to like Tempe. It's like the college town there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there once, but well, because I'm pretty sure Scottsdale's a college town as well. Like oh, Arizona, yeah. Arizona University's yeah. there, right? Yeah. But yeah, dude, we used to go <clears throat> every year. We'd go Supercross, but we'd go for the week before. We'd play golf for the first few days, and then we'd 
go to the waste management open like Thursday, Friday, and then Supercross Saturday night. <sighs> Good week. Bro. <laughs> Bro. You feeling a little bit like Sunday morning, maybe? Well, the last year that I was there, I actually had a fucked up kidney. Oh, I shit. elbowed myself in the ribs snowboarding. And then I was like pissing blood, like the whole deal. It oh, was shit. pretty bad. But then I had this weekend <laughs> planned in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like going to the going to the event with like Ricky Fowler and like we had the whole oh, the whole crew was damn. was there and then I, Ricky had a box at Supercross that year and so anyway like me and a bunch of mates we went and so I was like I'm not fucking going back to Australia to fix this kidney like well, I didn't even know it was my kidney at the time <clears throat> I knew something was wrong and so I was like I'm you know I'll rough it until we get there but yeah ended up going sent it all weekend pulled it like one of the hottest chicks out of the casino. You did? Yeah, out of the oh, casino one night. Good for you, man. Yeah, it was unreal. Took her, took her into the... <laughs> we had an RV in the car park <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the casino. You can't buy these stories, bro. Oh, dude, it was so much fun. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we went to Supercross. And there's actually a picture of me in the elevator with, like, the whole crew coming down from the box after the race. And, <laughs> dude, I was, like, yellow, bro. Like, my kidney was <laughs> fucked. Oh, fuck. So then I ended up, like... I flew home a couple of days after it. I took like two Xanax <coughs> to get home and like slept the whole way, rushed into emergency surgery. When it, yeah, it was a full on. But at least you had fun that week, I, right? It was a mad night. <laughs> yeah, it was good. We played like all the sick golf courses there and shit. But That's yeah, so awesome, Scottsdale. Man. But Phoenix. So Phoenix was always Lil D's birthday from FMF. Okay. I don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> so every, every year we used to go out. For, for his party at FMF, he used to, he used to have a little thing. So that's sick. Oh, Nashville. Is that where? That's it, an obvious one. Na- I've never been to Nashville. Oh my god! Are you going this year? No. Oh, dude. No, we leave. We go to Dubai. Oh, in like I got mid, you. Mid March, yeah. They, uh, Nashville's rad. I really want to go to Nashville. It's like, it's such a chill vibe. Like I feel like the whole city is, but man, it is. You see some pretty, Rowdy. pretty girls there too. Southern bells too. Everybody's there for their bachelorette parties, and mm. it's a good time. Did you get any pussy out of the OnlyFans deal? Mm. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Fuck, I love that. A little bit. I, I mean, love it that. It doesn't hurt. Definitely, it doesn't hurt driving around in an OnlyFans van, and um, you know, I mean, you got to throw it on the Tinder profile and stuff too. You know, first motorsports athlete sponsored by. Only fan. I mean, no big deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I fucking love. No, that. it's cool though. I mean, I mean, they might use me a little bit just to see if I got some connections, but I mean, that's uh, fine. That's, that's fine. I don't dude, care. Yeah, you yeah. for a night. I don't care. I'm a tool, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So, what what did it kind of come with then? So you get you get this OnlyFans deal, and then do you basically go like full team manager mode, like like we said, book all your flights, get all your shit done, buy your bikes parts like all that sort of stuff like you kind of just let you set up your entire year yeah so pretty much i uh i sent them a proposal i tell them what uh what uh you know i'll do this this and this i'll wrap the van i'll obviously have main placement on the bikes my helmet um do this this and this at every race um their contract entails you gotta make a certain amount of posts on only fans this this month um certain amount of posts on instagram so i have a contract i kind of gotta follow all the guidelines and everything um um but yeah dude there's i mean i do everything myself like literally everything i have no help with anything which which kind of sucks i mean i probably could kind yeah do you want to get help kind of a bit of a cheap ass with doing that shit but um <laughs> yeah yeah it, it definitely wouldn't hurt um but it's a lot man it's a lot on my plate that's for sure i mean kind of i guess you could say team owner and yeah like i said i mean literally everything but um my buddy mikey he um, he's helped me out this year. He he drives his van to all the races. Um, and as my mechanic, <clears throat> he helped me out when I got hurt. Pretty much did everything for me. Made all my meals for me and helped me out with everything. He's he's back in Florida right now, um, where I'm staying down there and getting some good riding. He's actually he's a local pro himself, so he oh, he, so he kind of gets it. Uh, yeah. he's, he's loving life right now. He's living down in Florida, still getting a little bit of paycheck and yeah. But uh, yeah, I appreciate him a ton. Oh, that's awesome. So. Was 2023 your first year as, like, OnlyFans, like, that was, like, title sponsor, like, yeah. new deal, essentially? Yeah. Yeah. 2023 was the first time OnlyFans kind of been presented um, into the sport. Um, yeah. And honestly, dude, it kind of got, it got a lot of love, but it also kind of got a lot of hate because um, yeah. <clears throat> I reached out to 
all the main media outlets, Vital, Racer X, um, everybody, and they all kind of did the announcement on the same day that I did. Yeah. And like reading some of the comments, I'm like, God dang, dude! Like, there's a lot of, a lot of preppy people out there. Like, um, yeah. so many people like look at OnlyFans like it's like so so negative. But like, I mean, dude, like, if you were to go on OnlyFans.com right now, like, you're not gonna see anything yeah. that you don't want to see unless yeah. you subscribe to somebody that you, you do, have to you fully search see. their username too. Like, yeah. you can't even just search like a person's name. Like, you, right. you have to actually, exactly. you have to actually know the username. Yeah, and, like, so many people just think that it's, like, such a negative, and, I mean, you go on Twitter, dude, you watch mm. full fucking pornos on Twitter, mm-hmm. just, they just pop up. Reddit. You go on OnlyFans, you're not going to see Reddit, that. Reddit, same shit. Reddit, I mean, Facebook, like, I mean, literally everything. I mean, if you're yeah. looking for something, you're going to find it, right? I but agree with that. It's just, I don't know. It got, it, it kind of has a bad persona, but, I mean, so I'm contracted to not promote that side of it at all. Um, I basically got to treat it like more of like a social media outlet, like yep. an Instagram or Twitter. Um, <clears throat> and I just use it to post stuff that I'm doing kind of behind the scenes that I don't post on Instagram and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a, uh, seems to be working. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, th- there's a whole topic here like to, to dive into and I, I see both sides of it. Sure. Me too. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much like exactly what you said, right? So to just to draw the line at OnlyFans, like if Twitter wanted to sponsor a Supercross team, one thousand percent, they would take that money. Hundred Feld would 10%. take. Feld would take that money. Yes. Like so, let's just not get it twisted. Yes. And it's exactly the same thing. Yes. But Twitter is probably worse because there's no paywall. Yeah. To the to that kind of content a little kid could go on twitter and yeah. see some yeah. bad stuff very yeah. easily and reddit is the exact same thing facebook like yep. you said so i get the argument if it's like on a whole if it's ever if you're just talking about porn in society but you can't say yeah. only fans and you so you can't have a <clears throat> porn in society conversation as it pertains to only fans because that's not doing that that's not what it is like you have to zoom out and look at everything like because that's one platform of many that has the exact same thing so it's like i do get both sides but i also don't think it's fair to kind of just go in on OnlyFans based on its image you kind of would have to take that approach on literally everything yeah i agree i think i uh i think kind of sort of have it out for me maybe with um with the 2022 stuff i had a chick's ass on my bike right i don't think they like that and then ended up having the whole or the whole company sponsor me and having that stuff in the pits and they're probably looking down on that but um yeah hopefully they'll uh get the fuck over it and (laughs) and uh let me continue to do what i'm doing man because i'm not doing anything wrong like i'm not I'm not posting chicks, dude. I, like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just promoting a different platform, a different social media platform. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't think they're looking at it that way. Yeah. So what <clears throat> what has been, like, the official, like, has there been anything officially from Feld that has, like, come across your way? Um, nobody from Feld has reached out to me now. Okay. So you've never, they've never told, like, they've never said, oh, you shouldn't be doing this or we don't like this. Or they just kind of, it's like said without being said in a way or like how do you get the vibe um i don't know if i i don't i don't want to get you in trouble either i'm just trying to like fuck it some of the ama guys told me it's not them yeah so a lot of people think it's the ama and it's not the ama it's it's felt in the tv broadcast that i don't think is 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 too pumped on it yeah um well yeah like i said i think a lot of people think it's the ama and because they're they make the rules and it's actually not that at all. I talked to, I talked to Mike Pelletier. I talked to J Bone. I even talked to Davey Coombs. Yeah. All good. It's, it's not them. And but so what? <clears throat> what like? What do you? What's the consequences or what's the vibe that you get or like? Has there been anything that's hard for you to navigate with it or like? I guess what are the consequences or like the negative consequences you've felt as a result? Um. Like having OnlyFans as a sponsor? Yeah. Um, nothing to my face. 
Yeah. Just keyboard warriors. A lot of people just talking negative about it on social media. Okay. So it's not necessarily like anything negative is happening to you as a result no, of it. Yeah. Not okay. currently, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, it's just more like yeah. the online, like the connotations of it, I guess. Yeah. I've heard some stuff being stirred up for next year, but hopefully, hopefully that's not, that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a fucking, it's, it's hard to like, it's hard to fully have the conversation based on not knowing exactly what the, like, what are you signing when you sign your entry form? Like, does it say that Feld yeah. has fine? Like, that's the stuff where yeah. I kind of don't know. Um, well, but they, they did actually make a rule this year and it said something along the lines of, I basically took it as you're allowed to have a sponsor if it's an 18 plus platform, which OnlyFans is, but you're not allowed to promote. I don't know what the professional words were, but it basically said you're not allowed to promote basically girls. Yeah, like adult content or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. But I mean, there's so, still some people out there doing it and I don't think they've shut it down yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah, the OnlyFans, like, they just got put in a weird spot, man. Like, yeah. COVID. Yeah, because, like, when they made OnlyFans, like, <laughs> I got the whole I got the whole whole rundown from, from yeah. Dylan. He's like, yeah, like, when OnlyFans was made, it was never, it never, ever meant to be what it, what people know it as now, right? So, it was just kind of a paid subscription to see a behind-the-scenes life of, you know, athletes, entrepreneurs, or, I mean, whoever, right? Um, and then girls found this little loophole, and you know, started making a lot of money off of it. So, um, obviously I'm sure the company knows that's where they're making a lot of, a lot of their money, but, um, it's not only that. Yeah. <clears throat> and the good thing is, yeah. So, I mean, for people that don't know, OnlyFans was around and like, I remember the early ads and stuff for it was like chicks doing cooking shows on there. Yeah. And like it was just so different to what it was, but it was open like you could post whatever the fuck it was behind a paywall yeah so chicks started going on there through covid and and like so you've got this company that launches this platform and covid at the exact same time yeah so it's like who knows if this happens without covid yeah true you know it's it was a crazy thing to like watch it go down i actually had a chick on the podcast in oz through through all this and she was making like 500 g's a month on OnlyFans. Fuck, dude, I'd be doing it too then. So she just jumped in and she was like a fucking V8 supercar driver in Australia. Not not a great one, but she was like the first chick driver or whatever. And then she got a fucking BBL, did the titties, fucking tats every, and just went <laughs> full-blown OnlyFans. Wow. And she like had never done anything like that in her life and uh, started making retarded amounts of money. And uh, yeah, but that was the whole fucking... Con- dude, the Gold Coast, like where we live in Oz, just exploded with OnlyFans chicks. Really? And ev- Dude, everyone's got them now. Every fu- every chick. Like we'd go, there's this, just this sexy little chick that makes our coffees in uh, at one of the coffee shops. And fucking, she was, I was in there one day just chatting, wait for me, for me coffee. And she's like, Oh, I'm going to Europe and this. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, sweet. Like, that sounds awesome. And I'm thinking, fuck, pretty bougie trip to Europe. And my brother went and got the coffee, same coffee and we were talking about it after. And he's like, oh, yeah, bro, she's got her OnlyFans. And he, like, pulls up her OnlyFans. And I'm just like, fucking literally every single chick that's half hot has a fucking OnlyFans. And all loves going to Europe, like, 21 yeah. years, 22 years old, flying around the world to Europe. It's like, it just went crazy. And I think the company itself had zero control over it. Yeah. And if girls, one girl's making 500 Gs a month on OnlyFans, how much fucking money did that company start making? Yeah. And so <clears throat> and there's also there's also a lot of girls that that have OnlyFans, right? And and they don't post all, all like super bad stuff. I mean, yeah. they'll post like lingerie pictures or bikini pictures or whatever and you know, people are still paying big bucks for that stuff just to see more than they can see on their Instagram. And I mean, all the power to them, dude. Fuck it. Dude, and like just feet chicks. <laughs> like, dude, chicks are doing fucking foot, <laughs> doing foot pics. 
Like, I had so many people message me after I fucked my foot up. Uh, There's probably somebody into that shit. <laughs> dude, you should run some kind of like special on my OnlyFans right now. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that just started making a lot of money. And if you're that company, like I would just challenge any of their <clears> keyboard <throat> warriors that, you know, like carry on about the OnlyFans thing. Just be yeah. like, what, what would happen? Like put yourself in their yeah. scenario. You just turn on this fucking website and then... COVID happens, every chick in the world figures out they can basically quit work, don't have to, ha- like, just can do whatever the fuck they want just by doing this. And the company just goes from making nothing to billions of fucking dollars. Like, it's it crazy. is a crazy, weird business. But then, on the flip side, the company goes, all right, we kind of don't just want to be that, but we're fucking caked. So, how about we just pay for people to come on our platform that we want to be on our platform. Yeah. And essentially you're that guy. Yeah, dude, it's, it's badass, right? Like, I mean, they're, they're starting to get into, um, uh, like MMA dude. And like, dude, mighty um, mouse, he, he posted today did he? that he, he's one of the best champions in the, in the UFC of all time. Oh. And he's doing his only fans and he's got like all of the, like behind the scenes, all the, he's retired now. All of his training rounds, all of his like, cra- he'll have this crazy archive of footage, and I was like, "That's brilliant." That's sick. Yeah, I mean, they're getting into all the sports. Uh, they got um, uh, Moto America. Um, yeah, Josh Heron. Yep, yep. Josh Heron. Um, yeah, we're actually boys. Um, he's a G. He needs to do the podcast. Well, yeah, he's been booked in before, but we had some schedule oh, problems. We'll have to but, get him in. Yeah, yeah he, he seems super cool. Yeah, um, he's a G. Just like it's it's just so cool like seeing them kind of starting to get into other sports. Um, mountain biking they're in now. They're sponsoring, I believe, three mountain bike mountain bike people. Um, and it's just so sick like seeing another another like. Could you imagine like Instagram doing this? Like, I just don't see that happening, right? So, <clears throat> just having another social media outlet just trying to support action sports is is rad. Like, and so many people look down on it, and I I'll never understand it. Yeah, and I think. Like I said, I, I definitely see both sides of it. You know, like as far as the porn thing goes, like I feel like it's probably Those are not... the people that just like don't know enough about it though. I yeah, feel like. yeah. And, and I think that that's what is kind of cool about this conversation, yeah. you know, is like you're the product of this company wanting to invest their money in other athletes and like invest in changing that connotation. It's like, here's a dude that the fans absolutely love. You've been grinding it out for years, not making any fucking money. And then all of a sudden you're able to <clears throat> make a good living. You're able to get to the races. You're able to improve on your fan base as it is. Like things are like, you are a direct result of, I guess, or you're a, an example of what can happen when a company like this decides to support the right person, you know? It's crazy, dude. Like, like I said, I feel like I kind of just, I kind of fell into the role after the the Hannah Ray thing. She reached out to me, and then everyone's like, oh, "Dude, you're the OnlyFans guy." I actually had a uh, merch that was kind of designed like similar to OnlyFans. It was like my name, but it kind of looked like OnlyFans yeah, back yeah, in like yeah. 2022. And yeah, it's like all that little shit. Like you did not thinking it was gonna turn into anything. I was just like, oh, "I'm trying to make a couple bucks on this fucking hoodie, right?" And <laughs> yeah, it ended up turning into to something huge. And now I have the backing of a fucking multi billion dollar company. It's 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 still to this day like I I'll, I won't believe it, man. <laughs> it's insane. I'm so lucky. Nah, it's fucking cool, dude. So, how did it change the way you were able to race? Like, did you think you improved as a racer as a as a result? Um, I do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like midway through 2023, I was actually kind of having a shitty season so far, uh, like the first like seven rounds. And then uh, I had a good round, and then kind of just meant it's all like mental, right? So once I had a good race, I started kind of clicking them off. I made six out of the last nine main events and uh, just started riding like myself, man. If you come out to A1 and you kind of ride like shit, it's uh, it's kind of hard to break break that feeling of like, do I actually belong there? Do I actually, <laughs> yeah. am I actually a 12th place in the LCQ guy? I'm like, dude, I, I remember at, um, at Houston, I think I straight up got 17th in the LCQ, like <laughs> straight up. I just couldn't pass anybody. And then two weeks later, I got third in the LCQ. And Fucking hell, yeah. Like was battling with some good guys. That's just, just the mental the mental side of it is just absolutely unbelievable. But um, yeah, coming into this year, I was I was grinding, dude. I, I worked so hard coming into this season. That's why I was like such a fucking bummer, dude. With like when the first start, it's uh, I got injured, but um, 
Yeah, is what it is, man. Everything happens for a reason, so it's is what it is. Man, <clears throat> me and Villo were talking about it on the pod, but like, I don't. Like, even he was saying I could not have raced San Diego. He's like, I just wouldn't have been able to go out there and like actually do that race. He said it's so fucking hard to race Supercross in the 450 class. And it's like that's Ryan Villapoto, <laughs> you know. It and is so, so stacked, like. A guy <clears throat> like you that can actually make a main event, it's fucking insane. Like, it it must just feel like the hardest challenge <laughs> that you could possibly face just making a main event. And, yeah. I mean, I've I've kind of, like, made my argument for why I think maybe there just shouldn't be privateers in Supercross. <laughs> but it's oh, like, thanks, man. <laughs> but for a while they're fucking here. God damn, it's impressive that somebody, like, because, and it, it's not... I hope it doesn't sound bad, but it's like there's Jet Lawrence and Chase Sexton and yeah. then there's you. For and it's, sure. it's a fucking enormous gap. And yeah. like you're on the same track in the same race and you've earned your way there <laughs> and you had to earn your way there. But it's like the level is so fucking gnarly and the, the spread of like current race ability. It's not talent. I don't think it's talent. I don't think it's, you know, work ethic. Like you're – you're not working any less than an Aaron Plessinger. You know what I mean? Maybe a little bit. But maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little bit. But it's like there is such a massive difference uh, between what, yeah. you, what you guys in that group are doing and like those top guys, but you're in the same place on the same night. You earned your way there, and it's so fucking hard to do. Like crazy, crazy competitive. It is – <clears throat> it is insane. Like, like when I go out there and I feel like I put down like, like I cannot go any faster than that. And it's like, say it's like a w- one minute, right? And I look up and you got Jet Lawrence running a fifty four something. I'm like, how? Like I just went as fast as I possibly can on my dirt bike, and this little fucker is still going like four and a, five and a half seconds faster than me. I'm like, god damn, dude. Like, I don't, I don't get it, man. It's those guys are on another level. It is, there's, that's like another persona about the sport. I feel like, oh, you just get on the bike and fucking ride it. Like, no, it's, it is the, the, the gnarliest sport in the world, I think. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree, man. But the crazy thing is, you earned your way there. There's only 20 dudes on planet Earth <clears throat> that can make a main, like Saturday night, we're going to have a main event in Arlington. 20 dudes. That's it. And you got to be one of the top fucking 20 dudes on planet Earth to do it. And, there's times when you're one of those guys. Yeah. It's fucking gnarly. It is crazy, man. Like, if, if you would have told me, um, like, when I turned pro that I was going to be making 450 main events, I would have laughed in your face. Um, it's it just to, to to be in the main event, like, with Ken Roxon and Eli Tomac and Jet Lawrence and those guys, it's just so surreal to me still. Like, never would I have ever thought that I was going to be anything. Like, my amateur career was nothing to write home about at all like i made it to loretta's twice did shitty both times and and um and and to be where i am today i mean it's pretty cool i I feel like i've been able to uh to build a decent little name for myself in this sport and i actually was on the racer x vault i don't know why i did this but i typed in my name on the racer x vault and i think i'm up to like 40 main events i think i've made in my that's, entire career that's actually amazing i, I had no idea i made that many it was it's pretty pretty unbelievable man that's uh like knowing knowing how much work goes into just making one main event is it's pretty pretty crazy to think that i've i've been able to accomplish that much yeah and and i'm sure that there's never really oh give me one of those two actually it's time about that time little modelo Uh, it's modelo time is that the actual what's the actual modelo yeah no the what's their like tagline Oh shit! I know what you're trying to say. I don't remember that. It's on the. Uh, on the can? They do it on the UFC. It's. I think is it. It's Modelo time. Is that know. what it is? I don't know. That doesn't sound familiar. Fuck. Should have got some limes. We gotta find it. I need to. I need to. Uh... <laughs> Modelos are good though, dude. They're underrated. Like everyone gets Coronas, but man, Modelos are pretty good. I actually. Um, let's go to Modelo slogan. This is gonna piss me off. <laughs> I burnt myself out on Coronas when I thought, uh, oh, yeah. oh, the mark of a tagline. 
Hmm? Brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Okay. That's what okay. it is. I yeah, they say that. it because they're, they're like UFC sponsor. <laughs> hey, cheers. Cheers, bro. by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need to piss in like three seconds. Yeah, after me this. too. See, that's why you should have privateers on the podcast more often, Jace. You fucking get to drink beers <laughs> while, while we're doing it. Um, I fully cooked myself on Corona when I first moved to America. I was only really? like 22 or 21 or whatever. And uh, the Coronas back home is like $65 for a carton. What? Yeah. Like a 12 pack? <laughs> 24 pack. A 24 pack. Okay. So, Holy shit, yeah, dude. dude, like you had to be fucking rich to drink Coronas. Like if you rocked up to a party with Coronas, everyone would be like, well, oh, fuck it. Why are they so much more expensive in Australia? Uh, maybe here? because it's like imported like so far or I don't know. But it's like a, Ow. it's like a bougie beer in Australia. Yeah. Well, it used to be. But, uh, and then, yeah, so I fully drank me and Roxon actually. Well, I'll, yeah. throw, I'll throw it while we're throwing dudes under the bus for party. <laughs> <laughs> Roxon used I've heard to. He, he, I like some. Yeah, Roxon Fox. I don't know anymore. He eats raw liver and bone marrow. Like he might be a little bit changed, but when he first <laughs> moved to America, it was whips like the same time. And we we got to America. Uh, Jay from JDR. Do you remember the JDR team? JDR. JDR KTM that Malcolm Stewart rode for when he oh, first. Yeah. Yeah. So I lived with the dude that owned that team. We're like still best friends to this day. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we we get to this house in California. They they buy the MDK team basically, like lock and key. Just bought the whole deal. That they came in just after the financial crisis. So MDK was who Mookie wrote for or no? No, it was JDR. JDR. So remember we did that dream ride shoot where like we took him to Australia and like we'd posted this big YouTube video. I remember Mookie riding. It was a while it was a while ago. Maybe you were maybe you were still. When he got he got into like some type of altercation with uh with somebody and like somebody smacked his helmet or something. I think he was on the team at that time. Maybe. Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, we we get to this here. We get to this house, we're all just moving to America. We bought a fridge, we bought a PlayStation 4, <laughs> and we bought a fucking giant hot tub. <laughs> and Roxon lived... Just the essentials, right? Dude, Roxon lived up the corner with his dad. And uh, he used to just always come over. We'd have a six-pack of Coronas. And it was just <laughs> always Coronas. And we'd That's just awesome. Smash, smash some Coronas. That in makes the hot me tub. a fan. Yeah, he, he is a cool motherfucker, actually. Yeah, he seems cool. I can't remember where I was going with that. I think just the fact that we were drinking beers. Yeah. And privateers. He's privateers cool, like. dude. Like, <clears throat> every time I see him, he, uh, I rode with him a little tiny bit over at Moto Sandbox. I rode there a few times and yeah, he was cool. Every time he saw him, every, every time he still sees me to this day, he's like, hey, what's up, Logan? I'm like, mm. oh shit, cool. You know who he, I am. He's, so. a re- he's a real dude. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's just a real good dude. Cool. Yeah. I'm a fan. I've always been a fan. Seeing him win last weekend was sick. Man. It, it's he's pretty good, man. It's amazing. Like, he's on, he's amazing. Yes, he is. You know, that that generation of Tomac, Kenny, Cooper, like they're what they're still able to do is pretty incredible. Who know? do you have for the title? Fuck, it's Dude, hard. Right? Bro. I don't even know. If I had to put my money on it, I'd probably go Jet. I think so too. But man, it's tough. Who 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 who's <clears throat> the second best? Like you got Jet, but Cooper. then you think Coop, yeah. I'm honestly leaning Coop too, to be honest. This weekend, Arlington. It would be really cool to see to see AP hold on yeah. and and be up there towards the end. AP's yeah. my boy. He's he's so cool, dude. Like he's like how he acts. Yeah, is how he is. is how he is. If you <laughs> met him right now, like. Yeah. And I'm I'm such a fan of that man. We actually grew up racing each other a little bit. He's from oh, Ohio. Yeah, as he's well. from Ohio. Yeah. 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 And I actually just saw his dad. His dad, um, his dad does like training uh, at this track called Waldo down in Florida. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had a long talk, and we were just talking about how good Aaron's doing, and yeah, it's uh, it's cool. It's cool seeing him do good because he's like such a genuinely good human being. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I said to him before press day the, at A one, I was like, oh, how how are you feeling? Because like you look pretty fucking good. Like he posted a bunch of the clips that he started posting getting closer getting closer like you know when you see hayden ride a bike and it's like pretty carefree yeah it's like i feel like when i ride i'm very careful and i'm very like I, uh-huh. i'm very like all right i'm putting my wheels just there there's no kicker i'm sitting everything's like i'm trying to be really in a box and then you see guys like hayden where it's just like they hit kickers they let the bike go so i like, even phase just them. that they just cruise you know, like they're just so fluid with it. AP started getting that. 
like in the preseason videos. Yeah. And it, it looked like he was just riding fast, like, and he could just be just loose and fast. And he was like, oh, I feel real good. And to see what he started doing, I mean, Sick. San Diego was gnarly. And I think that, that was, was so cool, man. Wasn't even like a mud race as much as it was just like, or just a, like technical, just gnarly. Yeah. <clears throat> it was just a gnarly dirt bike like, race. Almost like indie ish because it was just yep. rutted and techy yep. and oh, that heavy, was, that was thick, so cool. tacky dirt. Yeah. You know, there was nobody in that audience that wasn't on their feet cheering for AP after that win. Man, it was cool. It was, and then the next weekend, was it, was it Detroit or? I think it was, yeah, it was maybe Detroit, Detroit whatever. Yeah, um, but they wins the man, heat race, dude. He was ripping in yeah. that heat race. Yeah, and then how is it though? The crowd when he gets on the mic. Oh, he yeah. owns. He fully oh, yeah. owns the sport currently, right now. He is the yes, guy. I agree. I don't think there's anybody in the sport like. If anybody else in the sport won, I think AP would be would be number one for for cheers for sure. Oh, dude. Yeah, he's by far the fan favorite yeah. this year. He's almost turned into like the Daniel Ricciardo of Supercross, yeah. I think. You know, like Danny, if you go if you go to any F1 race, as soon as Ricciardo's anywhere, the crowd lights up. Anytime he's on TV, the crowd lights up. Like he's just got an aura around him. He's every driver's favorite driver. <laughs> like everyone loves that dude. And AP, like literally just everything I just said, is exactly the same with AP. And yeah. he's just so genuine. He's so himself. And he's just like yeah. fully embracing the position that he's in now, you know? Yeah, just a hillbilly cowboy. Yeah. So I think he's he's going to be in the championship a lot longer than I think people might have thought. I hope so. Um, but I, I think Coop as well. Like, yeah. dude, and his bike just looks so good. How did he get so good from... Paris, bro, to A one, bro, because he wasn't even close. At Paris. Someone fucking tell me, <laughs> because I had I did not have him even in like the top six at A one. But that's probably you know, uh, fucking Peter Pan. How it's like you can fly if you believe in it. That's basically like if you doubt Cooper Webb, he gets like he yeah. gets all that energy. Like you don't even have to yeah. say that you doubt Cooper Webb. It's like even if people think it he gets sent vibes and he's as soon so as people strong. think yeah as soon as people think he's out of it and that he's not going to do well he's a fucking man like An anthony literally said <clears throat> he goes they shouldn't have left coop off the poster at a1 and then the dude's just been sensational but i heard Same. he lost like 25 pounds the he month, does look the month before a1 so How? he's just gone like Fuck this! <laughs> just, just bit down and just sent it for the last bit of the off season. That's so sick. I'm I'm a Coop fan. I don't know Coop at all. Like, don't even know if I've ever talked to him. But I mean, how can you not be a Coop fan? The dude's just a grinder and just so mentally strong. And like every time you don't think he's gonna do good, oh yeah, there he is. He yeah. wins. Yeah. That's and like when I saw best. him qualify, I think he qualified really good at A one. I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive because he's not a qualifier. Mm. He'll, he'll be he'll be here. Yeah, yeah. So I think, and then Chase. I think Chase has been solid. Yeah, for like sure. He's really hasn't made mistakes. I think that's probably like the one thing he had to yeah. do going to KTM was not make the mistakes. Yeah, because I, I, I think that's like probably if he kept doing that, like even like let the speed come, but just you need a season of not tucking the front basically to like you know I think mentally he kind of needed that. So I think if you look at it like he's right there in the championship and i think he's having a good year yeah he's having some bad luck he's had a little injury like won some races you know he's kind of stayed right there so i think he's gonna be in it as I well agree. but dude it's fucking gnarly season it's it's nice for it to live up to the hype too <laughs> yeah totally i mean what has it been has it been six six winners i think six winners six yeah. winners out of seven races or something like that yeah that's crazy and still <laughs> hasn't won one eli still oh, hasn't yeah. won one wow so we've got... Um, there's, there's always a wild card too, right? Like a bar show or something like that at a mud race. Or, yeah. So there could potentially be eight or nine winners. Yeah, which would be fucking insane. All time. Yeah. Wouldn't it? I think it already is all time. Really? Yeah, I think the most wow. has ever been five. Wow. 
So we're already we're already having the best season. God damn. Picked the wrong year to race, man. There's Dude. so many fast fuckers out there. You picked the right year to have sponsors that'll pay you to be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you fucking picked. God damn. I'm gonna piss real quick. I said it. Yeah, you're good. How's your piss, mate? Amazing. It was pure Medella at this point. My man's down <laughs> fucking three. I love it. I need to catch up. Yeah, you do. I don't really drink much these days, eh? No. Ah. Just the kidney thing. I do. You do? I do, yeah. Yeah? I like having a good time. Yeah, there's not the, so much during the season, but I'm crippled right now, so yeah, just fucking we'll be all right. Hit it. No, I just the the kidney thing. I just I only oh, got one, yeah. so it just fucking ruins me. What, like you'll have one and it'll hit you harder? No, no, no. Like I only have one kidney. Oh shit! Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. So I was born with one. You know how I was saying that whole like the trip where I fucked up yeah. my kidney? Yeah, I so didn't I know only, you only had one. I didn't either until then. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, race motor my whole life. Like, just did the whole thing. <clears throat> I'd probably not that I would have done shit different, but oh my god. Yeah. So then I used to get the most fucking insane hangovers, bro. Like I used to drink and then just be like dead, and I'd be like, man, no one else feels like this. Just my headache, bro, would just be fucking out of control. Dude, maybe I only got one kidney, man, because hangovers are hitting me heavy lately. Dude, you should get checked out because it's like one in three hundred people are born with one kidney. But unless you have like internal injuries and shit, like your body functions pretty well normally. But Damn. yeah, fuck, get it, get a check, get your kidney check, bro. I encourage you. Yeah. All, all, I'll let you know if I only yeah, have let, one. Let, let me know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think Jet is probably the smart money to win the title. Mm. I think like the two dry 20 lappers we've had, he's won both of them. I agree. I think he's got a little bit to figure out. I feel like the start of the season would have been hard on him. Why do you think he was so dominant outdoors and he's not quite as dominant in Supercross? Uh, how do I explain this? I feel like it is harder for for you to be as dominant in Supercross because we've never times seen are people. so yeah. close. And yeah. there's, I mean, obviously there's more good guys too because the series was a bit depleted when he was racing it, but... I don't know. Yeah, well, He's a bad I think, dude, though, still. Basically, think about this. This is like a weird way to explain it. But think about the square footage that a Supercross track takes place on, right? So you've got 20 guys over, like, how many square foot? Now then go to an outdoor track, and you've got 40 guys over probably, like, 10 times the square yeah. footage. He's got more room to play with. Yeah, he's got, just got more room to move. Yeah. And I think that there's, like... He, Distance between things, like other riders, lapped riders, the circuit itself, the la like everything's just stretched out over like a larger time scale, and it's like a weird way of explaining it. But I just think like the variables that take place on such a small enclosed environment with twenty of the best dudes in the world, like I just think there's so much more shit that can go wrong. There's so many more obstacles. There's so many more people. Like, it's just yeah. everything is more condensed. So I just think, I think that's why you never saw Ricky get a perfect season. Jeremy almost did it. Emig kind of shit on that. Pissed in his cornflakes on that one. Saying. Yeah. But Emig almost, uh, MC almost did it one time. It's a good point. Yeah. No one's ever done it. Yeah. So, and I, I think the whole like argument, it's, I mean, I've spoke about it before, but it still kind of bugs me with like the, depleted field thing because when you think about it chase was the second best guy to eli it's true that and almost won the series so it's like anyone after eli it kind of uh after chase it's they're sort of irrelevant to the you're right. in a way so, so you're kind of saying maybe the only guy that was missing would have been eli, eli. Yeah, yeah that's it yeah yeah you're right you know so yeah, i you're, think you're right for sure because it's like nobody it just wasn't close yeah ever for third in that series when they raced. So it's like this then Jet if Jet beat Sexton that easily, like you're just adding one more guy. Yeah. You know. What sucks for Chase that series, man, like he was riding so good too in the outdoors. Like take away Jet, right? Oh, and, exactly. And, and Chase would win the races by what, a minute sometimes? Chet, he probably would have had a perfect season. <clears throat> probably. So and and I guess that's like that was kind of my point in that whole series is like, okay, you've the only missing variable is Eli. Chase has probably gotten a little bit better and Eli's not there. So like if Jet 
if Jet beats Chase, then he beat everybody from last year, yeah. essentially, you know? And so, and yeah, if you, everyone said how bad the field was, but it's like if you took Jet out and it was Sexton getting the perfect season, you wouldn't have said Sexton's level was dropped at all over last year. Yeah. You'd have like no reason to think that, but it was just the fact that Jet was going so much faster yeah. and making it look so much it easier it that it so made him look slower. And like, dude, until the 450 outdoors last year, Chase Sexton looked about as good on a motorcycle as you, you would think that's it. You'd be yeah. like, no one else can ride a bike better than Chase Sexton. Like freeze frame, any fucking photo, the yep. dude is in like the perfect spot. And there's like, Jet, Hold my modello. <laughs> yeah, and then, then like the broadcast started saying about how Chase looked not as perfect as Jet. Like, but you it's said the same a year guy. ago that he's the post perfect guy. <laughs> yeah, I know that's so crazy. But I mean, in a way, it it almost is true because I mean, Jet just rides so fucking effortless, man. It like so he almost does look like he's riding a little bit less than Chase's, but Chase also rides perfect, but Jet maybe is just just that a little bit a little bit more effortless riding style i guess you would say yeah it's it's insane man so could you learn anything about the speed this year based off being on the track at a1 for the time that you were uh shit do not really man i was i was <laughs> in, i tell. was in b group so yeah okay and i crashed on the first start of the first heat so i yeah. really didn't even get the chance to race but um i did ride around um prado a little bit and that dude, was, that dude was rolling good, man. Mm. He uh, he impressed me for sure. I didn't I didn't think he'd be that competitive this year, and obviously he's a world champion, right? But Supercross is a completely different, completely different animal. So, um, I think it was a a two, and I was watching, and he was up there in times, like he was within like a second of first place, and I was like, man, that's pretty impressive for somebody who's never rode Supercross before to be that competitive, and it was it was rad to see, and actually. Have you ever spoke to to Prado? Yeah, he did the show. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, he was so nice. Like I spoke <laughs> to him after like the first practice, first uh, <laughs> yeah. free practice or something, and I was like, "There's a little, there's a little, uh, little pisser in the in the hallway at the right before we go out onto the track, and we were like pissing next to each other, and and I was like, "Yo, how's Supercross? Like we're just both got our dicks out, just pissing." And, <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, how's it going?" He's like, "Oh, good, man. It's a." Uh, Track's good. Track's tough, man. Supercross is tough. And like we had a full blown conversation. I just asked him a quick question, and like he took all the time in the world to talk to me. I was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I'm I'm a Prado fan now. Like, cool as fuck. <laughs> Dude, he actually is cool as fuck. Yeah. Like, so verb, I was doing the verb podcast, and uh, we were just talking about Prado. Like, how do you think he'll do? And I gave my take. Completely forgot about it. And then I got locked out of my WhatsApp. It was on my other phone and fucking App Store, or whatever, right? So then I ended up going into my WhatsApp the other day because we we're about to go back to Dubai. That's all anyone uses. And I got this message from Prado, like a voice message. And I'm like, okay, that's fucking random. And he just sends me like a big thank you message for talking nicely, you know. Really? Yeah. And he was just, we'd done the pod. So like I'd say we're friends, you know. Yeah. But to just have a guy, I talk, I say nice things about everybody <laughs> yeah. for the most part, you know. And he just like fully took the time to just say like, oh, it means a lot and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, I was like, you are a fucking very nice person. <laughs> like that's not, not, that's not very typical behavior no, from a definitely not. top tier motocross rider, you know? So yeah, I'm, cool. I'm glad you had that experience with him because it's like, <laughs> he actually is that nice of a guy. Dude, like, yeah, like I said, we were pissing next to each other and like he started pissing before me and then I walked up to him, <clears throat> asked him the question, whatever. And like, he was still walking, talking to me, like as he was like walking out the door. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, that was pretty cool." Do uh, you guys don't talk that much to like? You said you never spoke to Coop. You never spoke like those guys would fucking know who you are. Like that, they might know who I am, but like I, I don't know. Like, Hundred percent, they do. I don't know. I don't want to bother them. You don't think it's weird to just not go up and be like, "It's not a voice." Coop's a fucking G. Kenny's yeah. a G. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know Kenny a little bit. Well, yeah, you rode with Kenny a bit. Tomac. Yeah. I still I spoke to Tomac a couple Tomac's of times. Cool as fuck, yeah, dude. he's really nice. Right. Um, everybody else, I mean, I don't, I know Chase. Chase is like a, I would consider Chase a friend of mine. Chase is super nice. He's like just so genuine. Yeah, he's another good dude. Really good guy, man. Like, I mean, I, honestly, I think all these guys are for sure. Yeah, like it's just like Barsha seems. I don't know Barsha, but he just he cool seems like a cool guy. Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody seems cool. Everybody, I feel like maybe just gets a bit of a persona because they're 
they are up here and people just think that they're going to be a dick, but they're really not maybe. Yeah. Oh man. A hundred. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think all like, I think a lot of guys would have a genuine respect for what you do too. You know, like you're in a, you're in a rare group of privateers. It's like <laughs> really making a goal of it. You know, yeah. like I think, he, you know, Moran's another guy, like just a bunch of respect for what he's been able to do, you know, yeah. just like hard work. Actually, he grinds. He, dude, he fucking grinds. Like yeah. really, really grinds. I mean, AJ Catanzaro, uh-huh. like he was a private. He ended up making so much money out of his shit that he could just not even race it. Yeah. You know, he's killing it, dude. So it's AJ's, like. AJ is cool, man. I, I like AJ a lot. So yeah, I think it's, uh, those guys were definitely, that fuck, that fuck with Logan Carr now. I, I hope so. <laughs> I'll have to tell him to come out with me at uh, in Daytona. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever wins it, yeah, let's go. <laughs> tell Mac. Dude, I'm pretty keen for that. Daytona this year, actually. It's so fun. I've only been one time. I have to go out. Yeah. <sighs> no. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I'm like married and shit. Uh, yeah. My wife doesn't want to go out. She'll, want, she'll want to go to sushi or, you know, <laughs> you, you know what she's like. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. We're, yeah. We might have to send it. I'm not racing, so maybe I would be at the race or something. Yeah. So you, you'll you go do the fan thing, like kind of in, interact and yeah. shake, shake babies, kiss hands. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably go there and like, uh, maybe set up my pit setup and stuff. They don't really have like a good pit setup there. Obviously, kind of everybody just gets a garage. But um, just be there, be relevant, promote my sponsor as best as I can there. That's what I've been trying to do. I I went to A two had like went there on Thursday and like set everything up as if I was racing just to to be cool to my sponsors. Um, talk to everybody, be cool, and um, but yeah, have a few beers after the race, maybe during the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get injured at A one, pretty. Mm-hmm fucking gnarly crash and yeah talk us through that experience because i had to really fucking suck it really fucking sucked that's for sure <laughs> um so yeah day was actually going great uh had a great off season seriously worked harder than i ever have um yeah because i'll just i'm gonna pause sorry yeah to you're good you. you've ride really fucking good thank you if it was if it was just this is one thing as well that you can always kind of think everyone can relate to like they see their local pro like Jeff Walker, watch him on yeah. YouTube by himself when he's like the fastest dude of the track. Fuck that guy rips. Yeah, yeah. When I watch you on your own practicing on a supercross track, holy fuck you rip. <laughs> but when you're on the same track as Jet, dude. it looks a little different. Yeah, it so sucks. All of this is saying like you're actually a fucking good rider. Thank <laughs> so you. all of the privateer talk and the different level, I just want to make sure everyone knows. But I know that you're a fucking G, right? <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, but yeah, off season was fantastic, man. I was riding. I feel like I was riding better than I ever have in my entire career. Uh, get to a one. Um, was out qualifying guys that kicked my ass last year. I was like, came off free practice. I'm like, oh shit, like all right. I was like sixth or seventh in B group, and you know, B group had some factory guys in it. And I was like, just off the board. I was like, all right, like we're there. Um, practice went good i think I ended up like 29 or 30 overall when and, and in that field like that's I was, I was pretty happy with that actually um heat race got off to a good start um whoever's fault you want to say it is freezy it was Har- vince's fault <laughs> he 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 caused it for sure i mean it, the first, i'm sure the first people, turns are hard though like, Especially a right-handed first turn. First race of the season, first gate drop yeah. of the season. Like, yeah. I'm sure people saw the i I sent a nice message to Freezy, um, which he did not give a fuck about, by the way. <laughs> I pro- I figured he didn't. Um, my plan was also never to post that. I just wanted I just wanted him to know that it wasn't even me. Like I, I even said in the message, I don't fully put all the blame on you for that. It was a right-handed first turn. You cut over on people. Hunter maybe could have let off a little bit, which would have not caused the ins- whatever is what it is. Um, it was, it's just more like, dude, like what he's been doing, like his whole career, like, like you putting so many people in danger. Not, like I said, not, not my situation. Just like, I mean, dude, he in cleaned, general. he cleaned Dean Wilson out at a one in the main, uh, the heat or the main, I think it was the main, it was like for ninth or 10th and like the first or second lap. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Like yeah. you guys are both killing it right now. Like just relax. Like just stupid shit. The Christian Craig thing, like just so many things like why, like just yeah. why, like you're such a good rider. You really are. But like, yeah, you, I think, you make people hate you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he rides desperate. Like, I've said it before, you know, and I've, I've sure. said it to him personally. I've said it to his face. I'm like, I just think you're still riding like 
you're the guy that doesn't have a ride and everything's yes. on the line and every like he rides and, like he doesn't belong where he is. Exactly. But he does. Exactly. <clears throat> and I think that if I was Vince Breeze, I would go, okay, I'm here. I've got a ride. i uh, fucking Mike Geneva's never gonna fire me. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> like if you, if he still has that ride up like if you if you're a pro athlete in twenty twenty four with your Instagram off, <laughs> like <laughs> There's an issue. There's but, an issue. So yeah. you're good. You've got some job security. What yeah. you should do is not try and keep people behind you, but try and learn from the people in front of you. Yeah. Like I would just say like it's time in your career to, to make the switch up. Like you belong there. You get good starts. You're on a team. You're going to be there every single weekend. You're not as fast as the guys in front of you. Don't try and keep them behind you. Yeah. Learn from them. Yeah. You know? I agree. Actually, I was watching uh, Dino's vlog, and I think it was Dino. Dino, like, just got past Freezy in the main event or something this past weekend, um, and then, like, threw his hand up to him over the triple, and I think his wife asked him, like, why'd you throw, why'd you throw your hand up to Freeze? And uh, I think she said, like, yeah, he actually was like, he was like, yeah, go Dino or something like that. Like, he actually said that. I'm like, oh, well, that's a fucking step in the right direction, I guess. Um, well, and and that's the thing, like, I've had so many interactions with Vince and I've even like given him chances at press conferences to like talk shit on me and he doesn't like, and he is, I think it just doesn't phase him. I, I think know. he just doesn't care. Like, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not sure. But I mean, he's always been nice to me and like, oh, you, yeah. you, and I'm really good friends with Charles Dow and who's icon fitness in Murrieta and he's trained him forever. Good? Okay. And it's like, Charles is the fucking nicest guy. Like one of those guys where you know that if he's friends with someone, they must be an oak, you know, like one yeah. of those deals. Yep, yep. So it's like he's fucking homies with friend Vince. They've been friends forever. Like he's been his tra- like he's obviously there's a part of that guy that's like a good dude. But totally. Just fully does not come out on the race no. track or like in the I, I think he could actually be kind of a fucking big star in the sport if he actually played his cards right. Yeah. Like <laughs> I mean, acted like the bad guy. Dude, I've t- and I've had conversations with him about it as well. I'm like, you need to be like the chael son of <laughs> yeah. super like just talk shit. Own it. Like yeah. when you take somebody yeah, I mean, out, just yeah. fucking but But now he just takes somebody out and like, oh I wasn't there. I don't know. It wasn't my fault. I, I, I thought know. I was in here too. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, no, but for sure, like, I mean, me and Vince have always been cool. Like, I mean, he follows me on, well, followed me on social media. Um, like we talked for a couple minutes on track walk at, at a one, right when, before that happened and all good. He's such a nice guy. But then when he puts his helmet on, he just becomes a fucking dipshit out of, out on the track. Like he just, he's cost so many people money, like, um, yeah, like injured people, like the sport's already so dangerous as is like mm. why don't you just ride with like a little bit of respect you ride mm. with zero respect like just a little bit just to try to keep people safe at least like yeah i don't know shit drives me crazy um yeah but yeah so that was pretty much your season done so what, yeah. what did you first think when you looked down at your leg so i think hunter tried to avoid him or something and then like came straight which made me dart left because i had a pretty good start i was i was up there and then uh, the old cowie the old cowie yeah okay yeah um and then uh a buddy of mine hunter schlosser so i was like going starting to turn and then i made an immediate like turn this way and then hunter hunter uh, hunter schlosser he was already pretty much committed to to kind of going into me accidentally obviously but um hit me i didn't think anything of it we just went into the tough blocks i didn't feel anything um i was like i looked down i was like oh shit my legs like in his front wheel and i like went to pull it out and hunter's like trying to like kind of help me like lift his front fender up and like when i pulled it out i looked down i'm like oh my god dude like that's that's not supposed to be pointing that way it was it was like a little bit past 90 degrees to the side like and I, I like, somehow I stayed like extremely calm in the whole situation. <laughs> he but was like, super chill. I'm thinking in my helmet, man. I'm like, dude, I, I got compound fractures. Like, I got bone sticking out. Like, hundred percent. Like, I never even thought there would even be a chance. It was just like a dislocation of my ankle. I mean, which obviously that's still not good, but probably better than having bone sticking out of your leg. 
So obviously I have a video I posted and Hunter looked at it <laughs> and he was like, he went like this and he was like waving to the to the Alpine star guys. He was like, yeah, uh, he's fucked up. <laughs> you come over here. Um, and then I think he got going and uh, they ended up picking me up, set me on a tough block. And yet at this point, I'm just like, I'm chill. But like, I'm all I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, like I just fucking worked my ass off for four months straight. Like barely any drink in like, I was like, man, I really, 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 really want to do good this year. And um, it's just like, fuck, dude, like three seconds into the first heat race, like it was such a bummer. And then I got obviously put on the put on put on the uh, golf cart thing, whatever. Got into the to the Alpine Stars rig. I'm like, you guys have like a pillow or something because they're like trying to take like my pants off and my boot off. I'm like, I don't want to see it. Like. I'm going to fucking pass out if I see, like, bones sticking out of my leg. So, like, gave me, like, a like a big <laughs> pillow, and I'm just, like, sitting there, like, holding it over my face. I have a video of it, actually. I posted it on my Instagram of the whole thing. Um, and, uh, they yeah, they started kind of, like, take cutting my pan off, and they're, like, they don't see anything on my leg. And then the one lady, she's like, yeah, I think, I think it's just your ankle dislocated. I'm like, really? I'm like, okay, that's, I guess that's good. <laughs> Um, and then like they started to kind of cut my boot off and they were able to, uh, to get my boot off. And, and then I looked down, I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> it's, uh, nothing was sticking out though, which was good. But I mean, seeing your ankle going completely the wrong direction was definitely spooked me. And then they, um, they, uh, Dr. Alexander, yeah, he, uh, he started kind of playing with it. He's like, I think I can get it back in. I'm like, oh fuck that. I'm sure that'll feel good. So he like kind of starts playing with it, and I'm like, just screaming fuck like at the top of my lungs. Not really, lungs, but I'm like, dude, it's like it's hurting so. Did bad. Did they give like, you any like pain no, meds? No, 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 nothing. No. nothing. And then after uh, he kind of got it back in place, they put just like a little uh, soft cast on it. Um, dude, so they just fucking yanked that son of a bitch in. Yeah, but man, it felt a lot better once it was back in place. Yeah, it's it, crazy the relief, eh? Yeah. Have you ever done your shoulder or anything like that? Thankfully, no. I've done my uh, ACL. I've done. I've had. I mean, I've broke my I fucking rods holding my whole back together right now. Um, but that was that. That was like a weird one. It was like so much. You felt like pressure. Yeah. Like wasn't so much pain. It was just like, just felt like something like wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, once he got that shit back together, it was wasn't too bad. So he actually sent me home. I went back and slept in my hotel that night in Anaheim, and no I actually had some buddies come over. My buddy went to Target across the street, bought a bottle of Tito's, and uh, had a few buddies over. <laughs> had a few cocktails in my room, and <laughs> then I woke up and I was like, "Fuck, this shit's kind of hurting." <laughs> Dude, gnarly. So, what did what did you end up breaking in there? Yeah, so I broke my, I just broke my fib, um. Which was it was Is that the one at the back? It's a smaller one. Yeah, yeah, the one at the back. It was pretty displaced, but um he just put a plate and screws in there to fix that. I had a, a fracture in my heel and then um, ligament damage. There was yeah. like three three ligaments that he needed to repair. One completely severed, which is why it was completely to the side, I guess. But yeah, dude, I mean, after it happened, knowing the outcome, like it I guess it couldn't have been much better. Yeah, dude. It could have been so bad. But I mean, I'm, like today, um, well, tomorrow will be five weeks after surgery. And today, I, um, I was actually already put, I'd be able to put um, full weight bearing on it, which yeah. is insane. I can't walk it because I don't have quite range of motion, but we're getting there, dude. I'm, I'm, I actually have a goal for like the last four rounds to try to get back for Supercross. Wow, that'd be sick. Yeah, I hope so, man. If I can get at least a month on the bike of training and riding, I think it's think it's reasonable yeah because i guess the smx thing kind of changes everything now right i'll probably not be able to make that without racing supercross because i don't race outdoors yeah right would you race outdoors i suck outdoors really i suck outdoors uh well i guess i guess i shouldn't say i suck outdoors i just don't do them yeah i don't like them they're just <laughs> that's, miserable that's dude. cool like, <laughs> i wrenched for my buddy my buddy travis i wrenched for him at a, at a national a couple years ago i'm like dude, why do you race this shit? Like, <laughs> if you make the motos, you're going to maybe make 800 bucks and you're, you're way over 800 bucks just to come to the race. Like, Supercross is like, man, you, you can make some good money in Supercross racing, right? So 
I don't know. I'm out on. I'm out on outdoors. I'll go there and cheer my boys on with a beer in my hand. So if you did four SMXs, you would it wouldn't be enough. If you did four supercrosses, you wouldn't get enough points, eh? If I kill it. Okay. Uh, even if I go to the last four and even get like top fifteens, I I don't think so because yeah. so many privateers do score points outdoors. Yeah. That's where yeah. most people get them. Yeah. Especially yeah. two motos a day. Did you do the SMX last year? I did, and I was like probably the second next alternate they were going to call. Okay. But I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't have been ready to race anyways. Yeah, right. We were having a good summer. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. bought a, uh, I bought like a little Malibu like wakeboard uh, boat. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We, were, we were having a good summer, which actually was like, it was like exactly what I needed, man, because I was like so burnt out. It's like 2022 that whole, or 2023, sorry, like, that whole season, I was, like, so burnt out, man, like, every time I went and practiced, like, like, I wasn't having fun, like, I get to the race, and I'm, like, fuck, like, another one, like, but I pretty much, I maybe rode five times last summer, and, like, once I started kind of getting back at it, like, I was, like, so stoked to go ride. Yeah, you were, like, Jones in the game. Yeah, I was, like, like, seeing progress, I was so hyped, like, and, like, when I went to the track and my trainer was like, yeah, we're going to do, uh, whatever, a 20 and a 15 and a sprints today. I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, hell yeah. Like, I'm pumped to go. Mm. But, um, yeah, dude, it's so easy to get burnt out, though. And I really don't understand how all these guys do it, man. Supercross, motocross, SMX, overseas races. Like, I mean, it is it is such a grind. Like, I only do Supercross. I did 17 Supercrosses last year, and I was already completely burnt out. I don't... These guys are these guys are robots, man. I don't get it. Yeah, and is that what it is like? Because I always wonder. Like you, you are a good rider, you know. Like a talented guy, you can make main events on a four fifty class. Is it just? Is it just that your personality wouldn't let you live the lifestyle required to be better? Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Cause I I do I do work hard like yeah but it's like up to a certain point yeah where, I'm not working as hard as Jet Lawrence for sure yeah and it's like so but it's like do you think if you did you could go like how much like what's your potential in your mind because everyone kind of like has an idea of like who's peak me <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. like oh, I could do this or I could do that but then it's like the reality is I'll probably skip a couple of those runs. I probably will not ride as hard. You know what I mean? I probably <laughs> yeah, won't sure. send it one up. But it's like, where do you, like, if you just went, like, full robot mode, you know? I don't like, think that would work for me. And and that's, yeah, that's kind of what I'm be... saying is that it's like your personality doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah. Because it's like, it just I mean, wouldn't I, be fun to you. Yeah. I Physically, mean, you could do it. Yeah, I, I could, but man, I I would just, I just wouldn't have fun, man. Like, and I do my best when I'm having fun. Like, if I gave it 110%, I really don't. I mean, maybe a position or two at the end of a main event or something like that. But, man, dude, I life is good right now. Like, I yeah. get to race my dirt bike. I get paid to race my dirt bike. And I get to see all these cool cities. And, and I mean, I work hard enough to to do well, right? I mean, you, yeah. you, don't, you don't get results that that I do have without putting in work, but um, obviously yes, I'm I'm definitely not working as hard as like a Chase Sexton or a Jet Lawrence, but man, life is good, man. I love it. Yeah, and and I I think that's amazing. Like I think that's it's so cool for because I mean even like I you know Jaren Stapleton, right? Mm-hmm. So like banger. I like Jaren. He's the fucking man. Yeah, he is the man, and it's like. Jaron? Durant, Duran. Duran, Duran. Every time I see him, I'm like, how the fuck do you say your name again? Dude? I say Duran. So <laughs> But it's like he knows that no matter what he does, you give him a factory bike, you yeah. get like, you're not fucking it's not gonna transform you into yeah. some winning machine. Sure. That's like, where I'm at. Yeah, but it that's great. Like how many people do you know that just can't be that honest with themselves? For sure. And there is a lot of privateers out there that are like, For sure. man, if I keep grinding and keep grinding, even though I'm not making main events, man, like, I think I can get a factory ride one day. I'm like, I mean, that's good. That's good to have that mindset. But realistically, that's probably not going to happen. Um, but yeah, dude, like I've kind of realized that that's not going to happen for me. It's uh, I mean, it'd be cool, right? But um, I feel like I'm doing the best thing I can for myself right now. 
Yeah, and it's like, you're going to get there. It, like, let's say HRC calls you up. It's going to come with all this shit that, like, you're just not going to be that pumped on. Yeah. So it's like, what are you going to get out of that? You might make a little bit more money and you'll probably have a nicer bike to ride. That'll probably be a fucking piece of shit because you'd have to be so fit and so on to, like, just full-blown <laughs> charging. so stiff. Yeah. I can't even fucking hold on to but it. That's the reality. Yeah, You know, sure. so it's like, be careful what you wish for. And it's like, d- this is applicable in everyday life. Like, I think about this shit all the time. Like, I, if, if I draw out my life of all the things I do, on paper, it looks like the most fantastic, like, ridiculous life that one could possibly lead, right? Obviously, there's fucking levels to the game, plenty of people that are, sure. that if you did the same thing. But, like, my average, my experience of my life is just me, like, mostly chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, so much of our lives are spent, like, thinking about that potential, oh, I should be doing this, I could be doing this, and... Well, uh, uh, if I had this in my life and it's like, it would yeah. be the fucking exact same. Yeah. Like you're actually killing it right here, right now. Replace all of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas and just be fucking pumped where you're at because you've kind of earned where you're at. Like yeah. even if your life sucks, you kind of probably earn a <laughs> lot of the suck. Right. You yeah. know, like how yeah. many people, uh, they're like, oh, my life sucks. And it's like, Okay, dude, you fucking do drugs every single weekend. Yeah. You never text people like back that could give you responsibilities. You drop the ball all the time. Like you want these things, but like your daily reflect, like you yeah. are where you are basically because of the fucking choices that you make every day, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's like you can rob so much joy from your experience. Like imagine if you were doing what you're doing right now, but you spent the whole time wishing you were Jet Lawrence instead of Logan <laughs> Carnival. It's like, yeah, no. it'd be fucking lame. Yeah, I'm so stuck on everything right now. It's Sometimes, like, I just, like, sit back and I'm like, man, this is pretty damn cool, man. Like, to be able to travel the country and, and and you know what, be, some, seem, be somewhat successful at it and um, build a little name for myself. And it's... I've already said this like fucking twelve times, but it's it's still just like so for so surreal to me, yeah. like to be able to uh, to be able to do this for a living, and you know have enough money to buy a sick little boat, and you know live the life I want to live. Um, it's uh, it's insane, dude. Like, yeah, you can always look in the negatives, but life's pretty fucking good, dude. For a lot of people, man, like so many people have good lives and they like they don't realize, they don't even it. realize it. Yeah, yeah, like you live in a nice fucking house, like you got fucking three dirt bikes little spoiled brats and <laughs> god dude there's so many kids out there like that it fucking drives me crazy but um yeah dude i mean life's life's good man you gotta you gotta look at the positives yeah yeah and i think guys like you guys like duran just you're there and you're fucking loving racing supercross because yeah. it's sick like and it's funny so i went to the ufc the other night right and i was there with my buddy and mark zuckerberg in was, vegas no nah, i was in anaheim it was actually oh, at Honda Center, yeah. Oh, shit, cool. And so we're sitting and like Mark Zuckerberg sitting right in front of us. <laughs> what? And, uh, and so we were just like, like we, Googled, we were like, Nikki's like, oh, how much do you think he's worth? Like a couple billion? I'm like, I think it's like a lot. I think it's like a couple <laughs> hundred billion. So we're like Googling his net worth sitting right behind him. But it's so fucking funny. He is at the UFC and he's sitting cage side and he's like, you go, fuck your Mark Zuckerberg, right? You got all the money in the world. <laughs> And like he could buy the UFC if he wanted <laughs> right, to, right? Yeah. You know what he fucking, you know what he can't do? Get in that cage. That's true. No matter how much money he's got, no matter how fucking, because he, be he does, to see. he does jujitsu, like he trains MMA, like oh, he's, shit. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he's fully into it, but he will never have a fight in the UFC. So it's like, when we were, we were kind of talking about the whole money thing, like, what would you buy? What would you buy? Yeah. And I was like, fuck, it's kind of crazy that when money becomes not an option, like when you can buy literally anything in the world, what you wouldn't, what you would realize isn't what money can buy you. You'd realize what money can't buy you. Yeah. And money can't buy that experience, right? And I would say the exact same thing about you and Duran and any of these privateers. Like I could buy 
the best bike with the best suspension. I could buy yeah. all that. I could fucking race full. I could try and race full time. Like I could buy that, right? I could not make a main event. You know, so it's like to be in a position in your life where you can have something that can't be bought with money. It's fucking cool and it's rare. And it's like to not like to spend your time being bummed or like, I don't know, factory ride or like if I had this, if I, whatever. It's like you're not looking at what's actually happening in your life. <clears throat> yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, like I, I just said, I mean, there's so many little kids out there and I mean, even fucking guys into their, like their mid twenties and like they're, I mean, mommy, daddy's still paying for everything. And like, they just act like their life is so hard. <laughs> you live in a fucking $5 million house and yeah, that's the shit that just absolutely drives me crazy. And like, I have no respect for those kids. Like, um, is there a bunch of those kids in supercross right now? Um, I would say no, it's more amateur kids. More the amateur like. stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I have a little thing I always say to my buddies. I'm like, dude, like you go from when you start to ride a dirt bike, right? You show up with your dad in like a little pickup truck and a van, right? And then you get to the amateur national level and then everyone's got these fucking $500,000 yeah. rigs and then you get, you turn pro and then you go back into a van. <laughs> I mean, obviously, unless you make it big time, but like, I feel like um, so many people just think you need all these bells and whistles to make it as a professional and I just feel like you don't yeah yeah and it's cool to like kind of walk the walk on that too you know like you can actually be a guy out there and there is like like i said there's there's like a part of me that wishes that there wasn't privateers in the sport purely but then the caveat to that is guys like you should be hired by teams basically so it's like i think that there should be a there should be a world where it's like we kind of know who the top 20 dudes are that gets figured out in like arena cross or something like that. And then it's like, you get the call up. You're one of the, you're one of the boys that's there every, or maybe it's like you still run heat rate. Maybe it's 40 guys, but the 40 guys, it's like you're guaranteed to get this much money. You you could either be like a privateer or it's like, let's say Honda HRC hires like five dudes. And then, and then Cowie hires five dudes and then Husky and there's like five, four fifty. So you build kind out, of like a, like a world supercross approach. Kind of. But I think, I don't know if they 100% nailed it with the way that it works. But I think listening to like some other stuff, I was, it, it seems like the teams are trying to take a little bit more of the money than maybe they should be giving the riders. Mm, yeah. And I think that's where it's kind of like a little bit, maybe hiring guys that, aren't as good just to kind of get, get their the, money for yeah. the team. Like, Cause they know they're not going to have to pay them to. Yeah. 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 So I don't think it's a fine line there probably. Huh? Yeah. I don't think they fully like nailed that model, yeah. but yeah, I just think, I think it'd like, I think it'd do a lot for guys like you. Like if let's say that was a thing and you had to get, it's like, all right, we've just got to pick 40 guys that are there so that we can run two heat races and an LCQ and then a main but it's like the same guys every weekend, basically. It's like, it would give you, let's say it's like Honda. It's not like HRC, but let's say you're on a Honda and they've got like a support rig. And then there's three of you over there. And then there's the two factory boys over there. So you'd like, you'd get the bikes, you'd get to the races, you'd get like, you'd kind of just get like a pretty good base level ride. And then you'd get access to the tracks. And so it's like, it would almost lift the level of, the privateers in, in a sense. But then I think, I think there should also be like more of an emphasis put on like the feeder series. Cause how much cooler would it be for you guys? If it was like, if arena cross was like a bit more super crossy and then you, you could go that series a, is killing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really? It really is. It's cool. Cause I feel like that series is, they're really trying to put emphasis on trying to make the riders money. Yeah, like they have a way for obviously to no- to donate to the riders, and they do the one v ones, and fans can donate to that. Like I think it's sick. I mean, the payout's good too, right? I mean, if you go you go five five. I mean, you're still making some pretty good money. Okay, I didn't know about the money side of it. Yeah, that that series is killing it. So yeah, I, I think there's like, I think there's a way where like the top guys and like top privateer guys like kind of shouldn't be struggling in a sense like there should be a certain like if you're at a certain level there should just be like a place for you to go to do your thing and like make decent 
money, you know, and not have to just like scrounge up for shit. Yeah. I think like it'd make that whole arena cross series better. And then it's like a legit feeder series. And then it's like just a straight stepping stone. And then, you know, maybe you don't have like the kids just going straight into race supercross. Maybe it's like, you know, you kind of get, I just, I feel like there's a way that it can be just done like a a tiny bit better on that front. You know, do you think the, the Ricky Carmichael road to supercross thing was, was pretty good. So how does it work? So, well, that was years ago, right? So yeah, because I don't really do it. It's like futures kind of took that yeah, over. Yeah, right? I, I literally have no idea how it works nowadays. I think, dude, I think you can get your supercross license through racing. I might be wrong, but I think just getting like points now, like not even at supercross. Events. Yeah, because so Evan Ferry raced the first round of supercross. And he's not. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't. I'm not sure how the points like. Cause yeah, he, he did futures last year. Did he? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I know he did. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he did at least enough. a couple of them, Ma- but enough. yeah, I don't know how it works, but honestly, dude, I think the futures thing was, um, well, the, the Ricky Carmichael road to supercross thing was, I mean, whatever Ricky Carmichael, but the going to arena cross with big whoops, tricky yep. rhythm sections, catapult, whatever. But I thought that was good. Like it gave the kids a, a chance to kind of realize that supercross is kind of gnarly right hitting some big whoops and um now i oh wait no dude you can fucking go to minios and race the supercross track there. maybe that's what it yeah. you get like top 20 and you get like points for your supercross license which you don't need you need zero supercross suspension to ride minios <laughs> yeah supercross, i could actually right? do that track. oh 100 and everybody could man like i don't know dude there needs i agree though there definitely needs to be a a, a better way to do it what what would you change about the sport like I, uh, let me just backtrack actually before i get into that the reason why i kind of have that position is because i just feel like and i see when people when shit gets posted like when we post up oh but what about the privateers and i'm like fuck do, do we really do we really have to stunt the progress of this professional sport yeah. for essentially amateurs so it's like that that to me is where I'm like, okay, well, our sport's not progressing in the way that it probably could. And the argument goes back to the privateers. So it's like, okay, we need to figure out a way where that's not an issue. Because the analogy that I use is like, imagine if there's five spots, four spots on two spots on the Knicks and two spots on the Nets before every game at Madison Square Garden. And there's a fucking practice court out the back and then there's like 20 dudes <laughs> that all have jobs that play basketball for the last four spots on Madison Square. Like that's actually what we're doing. And when you put it in that context, you're just like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> like what? He- what? So to make, and, and then, so the analogy would go a little bit further when you would go like, okay, so we're not going to, when, when going to start making rules around these four guys that play the half court to get into the thing. It's like, okay, well maybe we should just like figure out a way to just pay those fucking guys yeah, so that they're there and then like just let the sport do its thing, you know? So that's like, I guess that's where my head's at with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, private, I mean, so many people love privateers in the sport though, right? That's so true. <sighs> it's uh, so many people do. I mean, like the amount of people that come over and, and see me and I mean, a lot of other privateers as well during the week or during the, during the weekend is, is sick, man. Like, and, um, I don't know. I really don't see, I don't really see it changing anytime soon, but no, um, that it's not changing in that respect for sure. I do think we need change, but, um, I'm not really sure how to go about it though. What, what would you like? So you're, you are right in saying that like people love the privateers yeah. and there's probably, this whole layer of, in a sense that I'm like missing in a way too. Like maybe I just don't see enough of that in, in a sense. Like, a little sensitive to me because I am a privateer. <laughs> like, and, but just remember, I, I want you to get paid. <laughs> I want you to not be a private, I, I want you to not be a privateer essentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think like, yeah, you probably have like this really unique perspective on what is special about it. And then for the, argument that i just made you can also say maybe it's one of the coolest things in sport that every weekend 
average American guys get a chance, or not even American, just guys from all over the world get a chance to like live out the dream yeah. in that way. So it's that, like, that's also the counterpoint to the argument. It, it is cool because I mean, if, if you're a good enough dirt bike rider and you have your points, you can, I mean, fuck you, you can go race Eli Tomac, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. that is kind of crazy to think, but um, man, I don't know, man. I, I feel like privateers kind of make the sport pretty cool um definitely i do think the sport could go racing without privateers that's for damn sure i mean if i mean if they have 20 factory guys which i mean they probably damn new damn near do this year in the 450 class i mean they're still gonna go racing right but i don't know man i'm a privateer and and i love it i really wouldn't want to have it any other way if i rode for a team and i had fucking big man over here telling me what i can and can't do it's not really my scene that's actually a good point too is that it would kind of maybe just get gentrified yeah. and you wouldn't have like the personalities and, yeah. the, you know, like because you have a freedom <clears throat> that guys don't have that aren't in your position, you know, like you, you, you're your own fucking sugar daddy. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know? And you do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I mean, I don't think these factory OEM teams would be super pumped on kind of how I do all of my stuff, but being basically that I'm, kind of sort of my own boss i can do what <laughs> no, the fuck i want boss. right so yeah. it's cool man i uh i love what i'm doing so it's what awesome. would you change about the sport or what what do you think could improve like your experience the one thing that just kind of irks me is paying to race i agree like feld obviously is making a lot of money off of the racers and we have to pay to make them money, ultimately, right? So, I what's don't know. your entry fee to a Supercross race? It's two fifty, I believe now. So, what does it work out to be for a season for you? Eesh. I don't know. Two yeah. fifty times seventeen, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. That. <laughs> four, four grand, five grand, something like that. I don't know, but yeah, it's a lot of money, man. Like, I mean, for people that simply rely on their purse money, I mean, I mean, if they're there putting on the show for you, why the fuck do they have to pay? Right, I don't know. Yeah, that's just like something small that kind of drives me crazy. But I, I don't agree know, with dude. That, that, I mean, every everything else is. I mean, they're they're pretty cool. Obviously, everybody and their brother wants to get paid more, right? But um, it's gone up a lot just since I've started racing. So I mean, can't really talk too negative on that. It's just the just paying to race. Like, why? <laughs> yeah, know. like they're not making rich off of us paying to race. They're they're getting paid off the TV package, right? And they're getting paid off the fucking 60,000 fans that are there. Yeah, and all the sponsors. Like, sponsors, they'll be making yeah. millions of dollars a year on sponsors as oh, well. Yeah. Because it does make a difference. You yes. know, like, if you qualified to go and you make it into the show, like like you said, it, it is a show. I would I would definitely agree with that. I don't really see why you would need to pay. I don't get it. But it's the same as, like, Dakar, bro. It's like 25,000 euros. What? Yeah, to enter the fucking Dakar. Oh, my God. Do you think... um? The guy you just did your podcast with? Ricky. Um, Ricky Brabeck, yeah. Yeah. Does he make like a pretty good living, you think? I'd say so, yeah. From Honda? Yeah, I'd say he'd make like, for winning the Dakar that year, like, he'd probably make a million dollars. What? I'd think so. Holy shit, bro. I would guess. I would guess, bro. Like, he'd, be, awesome. he'd be on a couple hundred thousand for sure sign on. Yeah. And then you'd have to think it's a few hundred thousand dollar bonus to win. Like, wow. I think the prize money's, the, yeah, yeah. That's sick. He should be making money. Yeah, I think we were just talking about this before the podcast started. Like, he's not a household name, though. I feel like not enough people know who Ricky Brabeck is. The dude's yeah. a bad motherfucker, right? So, like, I don't know. More people need to know who that guy is. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. It's like, uh, it's not something like the the media here in the U.S. I feel like talks about a whole lot. No. The Dakar. No. I don't know much about it. Dude, but it was. It seems insane. Yeah, but man, that was like F1 and MotoGP. Like when I first lived here, I was a fucking yeah. weirdo for watching <laughs> Formula One. Oh, yeah. Like we'd go to. That you know, shit is crazy. When did you start watching that? I watched a little bit of that the Netflix documentary. Yeah, That's see? all. Yeah. And then I learned a lot about it. I'm like, dude, this is pretty crazy. Yeah. It was like the smallest team or something was like $400 million a year or something. I was like, holy shit, dude. And we think riding dirt bikes is expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they're on they're on like a crazy That's level. But crazy. I mean, yeah, America in general though, Americans love American shit. True, yeah. They love the NFL. 
They love the NBL. Uh, M- NBL. Yeah. They love the NBA. Like, they love their own shit. Yeah. And I think that anything outside of that scope, they don't give a fuck. But it's starting to change. Like, obviously, the F1 thing blew up the locks. But yeah. that's what's crazy to me about, like, Supercross. Why Supercross isn't more mainstream. Like, yeah. Supercross is mainstream, for sure. Like, dude, 17 races all around America selling out stadiums. That's a fucking mainstream sport. Yeah. In a sense, right? Like, I wonder, like, how many people, like, if you, who would you, would you say the most household name right now would be who? Eli? Kenny? Oh, that's a hard one, dude. Jet's new. I, I was just going to, my point was going to be, like, if you walk around to a lot of people, like, at a random yeah. place, like, do you think many people would know who those names are? No. No. So, yeah, I mean, but when I tell people that, I had Ricky Carmichael on the podcast. Everybody knows Ricky Carmichael. I Jeremy think. McGrath. Yes. So I think that it's definitely mainstream in the sense that if you said like, oh yeah, you know, like Ricky Carmichael, or like Jeremy McGrath, they're like, oh yeah, I know Supercross. Yeah. But yeah, if you said, what about Chase Sexton? What? It's, yeah. No, like it's not. But I think in terms of like a sport with a big television broadcast that fills up stadiums, like it's just definitely not like niche, I guess, yeah. you know? But it is think... definitely uh <clears throat> it's like a niche sport, I feel like. Right? Yeah. It's not like like everybody gets into baseball, everybody gets into football, everybody gets into whatever, whatever else. But I don't know. I feel like Supercross is just like core. Like everybody that loves Supercross like knows about Supercross. Yeah. And that's like like little things like on the I don't know, like kinda like on the broadcast and stuff, like they say like just like little things that like make people like everybody that's watching it. Is core, I feel like. No, it's what... For the most part, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah. a few people not, but but uh I guess they do have to dumb it down a little bit to to some people. Yeah. But yeah, I, I always would think with how much Americans love American shit, yeah. Why Supercross wasn't bigger. Because that's as American as it gets, you know? It's not like it's a, nice. it's not like it's a F one where it's in an international sport that kind of like moved its way into America. Yeah. Like it's a fucking American sport. If it got a little bit bigger, maybe then we don't have to pay for our entry fees. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to get the net- Netflix. But I mean, I agree. That would be sick. Yeah. And I, dude, I heard it was on the table. Really? Mm-hmm. That would be cool. Yeah. It was like five million bucks they had to spend to to do it, which isn't a lot of money. Probably not to fill. Yeah. So, but meanwhile, they need my two hundred fifty dollars a week. <laughs> dollars, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think there's, I think there's changes that could be made. But I actually think that there's been a lot of changes made just in the last twelve months that I yeah. think are a lot better. <clears throat> and I think that I, I would say that the sport definitely has like a wave of momentum. Yeah, you know, and I think I with, hope so with Jet with Danger yeah. Boy. Like, have you have you been around the pits like the Danger Boy pits? I have. I'm good buddies with Duff. Oh, uh, the man. You know Duff? Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Duff's a good time. He spent a lot of time in Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah He just yeah. went on a little, yeah, little, he went on a little vac- bender over there yeah, for a while, yeah, he didn't he? just went on vacation. Yeah. That's that's how Australian he is. He can literally <laughs> go to Australia. Uh, people, like, giving him their cars and staying with them. That's sick. He's a fucking man. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, those guys, those guys, they got killer followings, right? Danger Boy and... And Jet, hopefully they can help us build it a bit a bit more than it already is. Yeah. I worry that the sport will get a little too, like, pussy boy, though. You know what I mean? A little bit. Like, I had Tedesco in here the other day. <laughs> oh, boy. He's not pussy boy. He is not a fucking pussy boy. <laughs> no. Like, he doesn't have TikTok. Yeah. He doesn't do dances. He doesn't do... Fuck, he doesn't walk around with his shirt off. Like, and then we we're talking about... Think about the... Dudes like in his era, <laughs> Stefan Ron Carter. Yeah. Fucking, he was teammates with Matt Walker. Who's the next Matt Walker? <laughs> Who do we have coming up? Could you see Matt Walker, Eli Tomac, guys like that on TikTok? Just <laughs> that's what I'm, <laughs> like motocross used to be a fucking man sport. Mike Brown, Mike Bro, Ryan, Ryan Hughes. Guys, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I agree though. I'm yeah, it's definitely for getting our a little, a I'm little, worried for a little our... pussier than it used to be. That's for damn sure. And they can fucking ride. Hell yeah, they rip on a dirt bike. I mean, if they do their gay little TikTok dances, I mean, 
But I mean, if that's gonna build the sport, then fuck, keep doing it. But I don't know. But yeah, I, I'm not I, here for it. I had that realization the other day. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> that's a good point. I there actually is never no really thought more about that. Ivan Tedesco is coming, and there's no more Matt Walkers. I mean, the only guy would be Freeze, but he's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Everyone else is just like, I mean. Marsha rides like that, but he's yeah, not, but he's, he's not like, that guy. But all those guys are like, they're, they're going to retire soon. Yeah. Kenny's going to be done soon. Eli's going to be done soon. Who else? Barsh is going to be done soon. Yeah, Ando's sure. going to be done. Like, who's the next Jason Anderson? We need that. Yeah. Who's coming to fill that spot? Dude, I have no idea. And I just worry, like, I worry that a life of being at, training facilities and like that none of these dudes really yeah. have like that again well that's why you're cool <laughs> is because you live a life i feel like you've everyone is like uh, you've, you know yeah everyone's trying to just be like everybody else right and everyone wants to be like eli or somebody who's just you know proper that's a great point though you made though i don't i don't think i don't is there anybody in the 250 class right now that's like a little bit edgy who's competitive? Diggs. Yeah. But I mean, Other I wouldn't him. say like the thing that, that Diggs will always have is like he's rich. He's always been rich. He's never going to have like the crazy pressure on him to conform because even if Star was like, hey, you got to do this, like for what they love him there, like it's not going to happen. But yeah, it's like if, so, if someone just pulled the pin on him, guess what? Brian is going to take their fucking massive hauler. He's going to fill it with bikes. He's going to hire Duff. He's going to hire the... Like, they're sweet. So yeah. I don't think, like, he's never going to have to be put in a box yeah. by the industry. So I think, like, he's going to be fine. But, yeah, I mean, I just I just don't know. And I just don't know that you, like, can have those people these days. Like, where would they come from? What life do you live going to fucking a facility for your entire life being yeah. homeschooled and just racing moto like we do need more of those personalities though but like look, dude like j-law like yeah. j-law is such a legend dude like everybody loves j-law yeah he just made the sport so interesting right yeah <clears throat> and like uh i don't know we need we need more of that shit yeah everyone's the same nowadays i feel like yeah well, they all train the same place. They go to the same races. They, they all act the same. <laughs> yeah, it's all like it's literally they're all trying to get the same jobs. Yeah, they're yeah. all trying to get the same sponsors. It's just like it's a fucking machine, you know, that's like we've cultivated this machine that makes like a certain type of person. And then yeah. it's not until you get three or four years into your 450 career and you've made a bunch of money and you've kind of – you've even if they fired you, like you're fine. <laughs> yeah. You can right. live, you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when you'll see like a Jason Anderson get cool and a Ken Roxon really get cool and a Eli Tomac go and just do his own thing and Cooper Webb tell KTM to get fucked, <laughs> you know, like so. But you've got this huge gap in the middle where like yeah. you kind of just can't be anybody. I feel like times have changed, right? Like, <clears throat> like maybe training wasn't as aggressive as it is now back in like 2000 i don't know three to 2008 something like that when what j-law was successful in 2008 he won 2008 that title. yeah i think he won the title yeah. yeah i feel like you can't you're not winning supercross main events if you're not you know putting Living every single thing into it right yeah um, i don't know times have changed i grew up in the wrong era <laughs> if i would have grew up in the early 2000s i think it would have been a little bit cooler for me yeah, but that's such a good point is like you're you're not the factory dude and you're not going to like that's not the route that you're going to go down. But it's like people love you because you are actually a fucking cool guy. Yeah. You know, and you're like and copy paste you right now in 2002. Like you're probably <laughs> going to get some podiums. <laughs> <laughs> My God, be insane. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, yeah, it, I think the level has just gone yeah. like even Stank Dog. Stank Dog's sick. Like, Stank's a fucking amazing personality. Yeah, he is. But, and Hill, you know, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, they're just not, they're not in the position in their life or even have the desire yeah. to just go to the test track, lock in, and just do 
like basically not have a life yeah. to you know to for it but it's kind of a lot of things these days you know like that dude there was two years where i was doing the podcast where i basically was in the studio or in my room editing videos that's it like i fucking had no life for two years you know because i i just it is hard to make something happen these days and i just feel like it applies to almost every field that you're in like to to get abnormal results you kind of like need to be an abnormal person in a sense yeah i totally agree i feel like that's why um <clears throat> not many people kind of act how i do maybe nowadays and maybe that's why people are gravitating towards me a little bit i'm kind of building a, a little bit of an image for myself because i don't really give a fuck <laughs> like I, <laughs> I post and do whatever the hell i want to do and just everybody is just so corporate nowadays man and like they think if you don't show up to the track in a fucking suit and tie, like you're not, you're not serious. But you can also put in work and have a good time, right? So, I don't know, man. Like I said, grew up in the wrong era, but I mean, we're still here. We're we're, still, we're, still, we're still kicking. So, what's a what's a good off season look like for you in terms of like ride wise, workload, gym? You know, yeah. what's what what's the work that goes into it on your end? Yeah. So I have a trainer. Um, he lives in Santa Barbara, California. His name is Daniel Laub. Um, I've been training with him for years. Um, <clears throat> he knows I like to fuck off, obviously, a little bit. But um, this year, he got me on a really good program. And I told him this year I did not want to F off. And I rode four days a week. Damn. Yeah. From October 1st, I got to Florida and then flew to California, I think, January 1st. Four days a week. Four days a week I was riding, doing motos. And, dude, honestly, riding that much, you don't do that that much off the bike. Um, like yeah. on my uh On my chill days, I would do road bike rides or, like, light runs, hit the gym every once in a while. But my riding days were, were a serious workload. Yeah. And what are you working on when you're out riding? Big technique guy or you're just trying this to do season, the laps? This season, um, I was in the beginning. Um, I wanted to work on a few things. And it really, really did help. What did you work on? So I went to, um, so Justin Starling rides at this place in uh, Brooksville, Florida. Yeah. It was actually RJ Hampshire's old place. Oh, yeah. And Pooh Sipes. You know Pooh Sipes? Ryan Sipes' brother. Yeah, okay. So he was there and he actually uh, helped me with some things. I was I was skimming the whoops and I felt like I was riding pretty good. And I, I asked him because he was the riding coach there. Um, and he was like, I asked him if was anything he thinks that i could work on he said pushing through the rhythms and uh my body positioning and the whoops was off a little bit and just showed me a few things and every time i went to the track after that like that's all i was focused on so i took a couple weeks and just sh like straight up just focused on those things um and it helped so much and then like once it once you start becoming used to doing yeah. that it becomes habit and and then once i kind of got that figured out i um just started pounding out laps like so many laps man um I live with my buddy Max down in Florida, and um, his his dad's a hard ass on me. So he uh, he comes to the track every day with me, and um, basically called me a pussy every time I came off the track. Even though even if I even if I had a good moto, <laughs> yeah. he's like, "Yeah, you rode like a pussy." I'm like, "No, I did. I fucking rode good. Chill." <laughs> <laughs> but it was good, man. He's uh he's like a second dad to me, and um, yeah, dude. Ever since I did uh figured out a couple things that I needed to work on, I uh yeah just got after it. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna piss again. Fuck. There you go, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. So what? What exactly was the advice going through the whoops? Because I feel like the <clears throat> technique has changed a lot yeah. in the last couple of years. So when I was skimming the whoops, <clears throat> I didn't have my knees back far enough. So mm. I always like like I watch Jet hit the whoops, and I I always try to watch footage of like the best guys in the whoops and try to figure out what to do. So I, like I was skimming the whoops. And I was like standing with my chin like over the bar, like kind of how he does. But my knees were yeah. not back enough like him. Like if you watch him go through the whoops, he almost looks like he's like a jockey on a horse. Yeah. Like you just everything's going on under, on, on underneath of you. Um, and my knees were a bit too far forward. So that's, yeah. that's pretty much all it was. Dude, it's crazy. But it made a huge difference. Man. So I'm a full technique nerd. I just yeah. fully froth it. But I watched, there was a video that, uh came out when chase went from 250 to 450 on hrc and there was just like a video that someone posted i can't remember who it was 
but it was like Chase Texan rides 450 for the first time. And dude, it fucking blew my mind, just technique wise. And I watched that video. I was like, I'm going to figure out what he's doing different. And so I watched that video like 50 times and I watched it in like the slowest that it would go on YouTube. And basically from that video, I figured out like, you know, you've got your foot and it's got the front arch. So like the top. Yeah. That his kneecap is never in front of the front arch of his foot. Okay. That's the, that's like the heuristic that I then. So what I said was basically. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, that's the new technique basically. Yeah. So another thing he said was I, I was, like I said, I was too far forward, but like I watched a video with Jet and he's like, yeah, he, you always want to. Jesus Christ, what the fuck am I saying here? So the guy said, you want to lean back, but you still want to have your head over the bars. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It didn't make sense to me at first, and then I did it a few times, and it was like, okay, that totally makes sense because you want more weight towards the back of the bike yeah. so you can kind of dig into the whoop and kind of yeah. pull yourself forward. So I was standing um, too far forward, and I was kind of losing power the, the, because I wasn't... And the back would be... Yes. And then it doesn't drive Correct. because it, it lifts off the exactly. back of the whoop. Yeah. So if when you got like a still of me in the whoops, I could look good, but I, w- I didn't have my butt back far enough. Apparently that was the, that was the issue. Yeah. It was a world of difference for sure. Oh man, it completely changed my riding. Really? When I, when I started doing, so the position like, I'll show you after like yeah. what, how I think about it. Fuck, show him do the qualifiers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I realize sure. I sound like a dickhead. Nah. But I would think about basically like, so if you get, on your toes in a you just sit down right in a straight line put your butt like your chin over the bar pad basically yeah and then literally just keep your head in the same position where you're seated but then he like press your ass back as far as you can go and use your feet to feel like you're pushing yourself off the rear of the motorcycle yeah that's basically like the position to go from sitting to standing it's literally the exact, like your head actually shouldn't move. So that's like the thing that I always try and do when I ride is like I'll come out of a turn and then I'll just literally like throw my ass back and just try and imagine that my head is staying in the exact same spot. And then the other thing I think that helps massive is like pointing your, like your chest. Like if you look at Jet's posture. Yeah. And Hunter. And Hunter might be better than Jet at that actually. Just <clears throat> perfect, like straight up and down, neck back, you know, like that. But they have good posture when they stand. I don't know if you've ever watched Eli Tomac at a press conference. <laughs> Bro, motherfucker is just like military. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like that posture translates into your riding. So if you've got like just shitty posture in your daily life, which I like kind of do. I do too. It's just going to fucking translate, you know. So they fully just train that the exact posture but yeah i think it's like that chest out and then shoulders back so it's like you know if you're doing like a row at the gym you're trying to like pinch your shoulder blade yeah. that those muscles in your rhomboids or whatever yeah. they're called it's exactly how they're that's right. literally what you got to do so it's like when you're riding if you're like pinching the the scapulas back together and having your head over the front you can't, like there's just these little like body cues that if you do those things while you ride like you'll end up being in the right position yeah. because that's fucking all motocross is it's having the right bike position on the track and a body position that matches the bike position yeah and like when you're explaining the like shooting your ass back or whatever like if you're standing up cuz i do the exact same thing so when i see pictures of me riding shit my knees will be like a little bit forward to the front yeah. arch of my foot and I'll be up quite high, right? So what that does, it puts your center of gravity higher. So like when you've got a when you've got a you've got a bike that has its center of gravity, and the best way the best handling bikes have a low center of gravity, right? And then if you have something with a high center of gravity on top of a, something with a low center of gravity, it's like so much easier for the, like everything gets exaggerated. So this, when the weight goes this way, it's such a massive counter force. So when you actually, what Jet and Chase and those guys are doing, they're actually bringing their center of gravity closer to the center of gravity of the motorcycle. 
and then any movement you have forward, back, left or right, it doesn't have the same amount of impact on the motorcycle center of gravity. And so basically how I think about riding now is just two center of gravities lining each other, themselves up as best they can with yeah. as minimal output as possible on either end. So if you're up here, you've got to make these huge swings around to actually impact the center of gravity of the motorcycle. So it's like, it really is a, it's a scientific game, but it's also like quite a, quite a simple game in a sense too. It's like get your center of gravity as low as possible. And like, you're just dispersing the weight. Like think about when your head's here and your ass is back here and your chest is low to the seat. Yeah. You're like dispersing the weight evenly over the motorcycle. Yep. And now you just take that weight up more. It's just physics. <clears throat> it makes sense. They make it look so easy. It's crazy. Man, dude, it's so not that easy. The time that those motherfuckers... To do that naturally. Just to... Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Blo blows me away, dude. God, dude. Those little fuckers are good, man. Yeah. But it's cool that you're able to make progress and make strides throughout yeah. the season. That is something I, I, I try to do a lot. Like, I do pride myself. I feel like I have fair, fairly decent, like, riding technique and form. Um... I try to ride like effortless almost in a way and not try to, I don't know, yeah, like effortlessly, I guess, in a way. Um, just trying to make sure my technique is good and not trying to ride over my head. And yeah, it's, uh, it's working. It's working for me, I guess. What's the best race you've ever had? Oh, shit. Like as a pro? Yeah. Nashville this year was pretty good. Um, Salt Lake 2021, I got a seventh and a 250 main. That was... That's sick. The series was kind of um, a bit easy at that time, but I got lapped on like the last lap, which was really good for me, mm. which still sucks to say, but man. Nah, dude, it's a 50 <clears throat> black. That's actually impressive. Yeah, yeah. I had a good ride there, man. I was uh, just got a good start and just kind of rode my pace up there and, and rode good. Um. But Nashville this year was actually really good too. I I got a not a good start in the 450 main, but I kind of just rode my pace and ended up getting together with Kate. I think Kate, Kate was having an off night and we kind of bumped each other in uh, an off off camber corner and got stuck together for like 25 seconds, at least 25 seconds, about a half a lap down at that point. And ended up somehow coming back to 15th that night. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. It's like sometimes you just have those races that you just feel like you can ride forever. Mm. And I just started kind of picking guys off there towards the end and actually ended up in the race pretty close to like 13th there towards the end. But um, yeah, had that little altercation, but man, it was a good night. That's so sick. We celebrated that night too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And in Nashville too. In Nashville too. And it was a day race. It's a day. The, the race was done at like five o'clock. Oh, so. fuck. Day drink is awesome. best. I, for sure. 100%. <laughs> That's awesome. So, how gnarly is a 450 LCQ these days? Oh, my God. It's so scary. Is that the most stressful thing a human can do? Dude, my, like, my stress is getting so bad on race day now. Like, last year, I think I, I actually puked before, like, I think it was like 12 out of the 17 races I puked before. With the, nerves. Yeah. Either the heat race or the LCQ. Usually before the LCQ. But it's, yeah, it's gnarly, dude. Like, I usually, like, when I, my mechanic last year, um, when I walked away, he knew where I was going. I needed to find, like, a place that nobody was and get it all out. I felt like I just ate, like, I don't know, fucking 20 pounds of food. Like, it just wouldn't stay down because I was just so nervous. So I would go out there for the LCQ in the main event with nothing in my stomach. Oh. So that that didn't help. But yeah, nerves are crazy, man. Like, and it's and I I ride for myself, right? So I shouldn't be that nervous, but I just put so much pressure on myself. It's mm. it's not really. Why do you think you do that? It's it's also hard. Like when you do really good, when you do really good a week, and then you just feel like you're obligated to at least do that good, mm. or you feel like you're failing yourself. I don't know. It sucks, man. <laughs> Do you work with anybody, like mental, no. like therapist type mm -mm. vibes? I probably should. Fuck yeah, you should. I think yeah. everyone should. Yeah. I never have. But that shit sucks. Like at Indy Supercross this year, right before I, I did well in that LCQ, I had my head in 
head in the garbage can in the indoor pits. <laughs> People were see what like watching me. I'm like, sorry, nothing you can see, nothing to see here, man. And then I went out there and got the whole shot, and I did pretty good. But it's uh, you definitely lose a lot of energy when you uh, get ready, get everything out of your system. I feel like there's probably some like easy ways that you could rationalize that those nerves away. So I'm um, talking to Steve Navarro, who's doing all my physical therapy now. Um, we were talking about that, and he's going to try to get me set up on some stuff that will help me out for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I do. I think he's amazing. I think it's worthwhile, man, like just to <clears> – it's like there's a lot of value in removing expectations, you know? I agree. When I go into a race and I feel like I have no – obligations or whatever it's uh i feel like i perform so much better mm. yeah but, and you you like you're already there you're already doing it you're as good as you are and you're as good as you're gonna be yeah like and you would you, think it would get better you know like what it, fucking 14 rounds into the series i still got my head in the fucking toilet that's like what i'm saying like this this and you're gonna do it either way so yeah. like when you're I'm, gonna do as good as you can do, no matter what, whether you're scared or not. Like you're, I'm not, I'm never ever ever gonna go out on the track and just not try. Yeah, I give it my all every single time I'm on the track. Like, and you're right, I, I shouldn't be that scared. I'm not scared of getting hurt or nothing like that. It's it's only performance based. That's why yeah. I, only the reason I'm scared. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think there's yeah, I think there's it's probably a lot easier for you to overcome that than you think. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude, for sure. Like, if you really put a bit of, like, mental work into it. Because you just, like, I always think about what I'm, like, robbing from myself in a sense. You know, like, you're robbing yourself of, like, a certain enjoyment out of this thing that you've, like, worked super, 100%. super hard for. You I know? don't, like, it sucks to say, man, but, like, I'm, like I don't love race days because, like, I know that shit's coming. Mm. Like, when I wake up. It is so hard for me to get my breakfast down and we go off for free practice and then I have to eat lunch. I'm like, just like, eh, like I'm like gagging when I'm trying to eat lunch and yeah, it sucks. I, for sure though, I, I do agree. I feel like I need to get something figured out there. Yeah. And it's, I'm, I just don't think it'd be as hard as what you think. It's like a, at least for me, like I always try and intellectualize the thing, like just keep going. Just keep yeah. pushing further and further into like why, 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 yeah. why, and it's like if you can ask why enough times, to kind of like have a bit of a light bulb moment. Like I had a when I was competing a lot in jujitsu, I would get so nervous, like so fucking nervous, to where I just didn't want to do it. I was only doing it because it's like a bit of a pathway forward in like yeah, doing the sport, you know, and. uh and then at one point, I actually got some advice from this dude, Craig Jones. He's like a one of the big grapplers. But um, he was like, man, you're already there and you're going to do it. Like, you're not going to back out. It seems so easy when so you like, say it like that. Why would you? Because you got two choices, right? You go on a supercross and you, you got these nerves. So then you've got a decision to make. Are you going to pack up and go home so you don't have to deal with the nerves <laughs> or are you going to do the race and then it's like if if yes then fuck all of the rest of it like if you're actually going to commit to do the race then drop the worry about doing the race you're going to do it, it uh, unless you're going to use that to back out but if you're not going to use that nervous energy and the fear of perf performance to actually force you to back out of the race then you need to just drop it because all you're doing is like fucking yourself for well, the like race. But just deci a decision, <clears throat> you know? Like, you, like I, I try telling myself that. Like I even tried telling myself like, yeah, if you don't make the main event, like it's okay. But man, dude, it's so hard. It's so hard for me. But like, I just think like, but how much control do you think you have over making the main event? I mean, a lot. In what way though? It's up to me to do it, right? Yeah, but that you're one of t of nineteen people on the track, or twenty two. Yeah. So it's like there's more; those people have more control than you, in a sense. Like, look at That's what true. look at what happened today. One, 
Yeah. Like true. fully out of your, like, <laughs> I think that there's a point and that's where I'm saying like intellectually, I think you can get to the point where it's like, oh, this actually doesn't make sense. Man, if I could get to the point where I'm at the races and I'm not nervous, I feel like I could be a little forced to be reckoned with, but man, that those nerves are horrible. Yeah, and I think that I, I don't know that you could just ever like get rid of the nerves, but I think that yeah. there's like a way that you interface with them. Yeah. Because like how I think about it is, it's like a point of diminishing returns, right? So it's like you can... The, that anxiety and that stress is actually helpful. Yeah. Right. To a point. So that it's like this big U curve. Yeah. I'm a little past that point. Yeah. I think. E- exactly. So that's what I think like you need to like actually mentally like draw that, <laughs> like draw it and be like, where are you on this versus like, where's peak anxiety? And just like once you get to peak anxiety, fucking the rest done done. like don't let the anxiety and the fear like then diminish your returns because there's a point like if the opposite was true and you didn't give a fuck at all yeah that's bad too yeah so it's like the two ends of the spectrum are bad where's the happy medium yeah and i think you can just i think you can just get to that mentally by just going like because what's the thing that could fuck you up in the race like is that there's the things that you can control. And so if there's like all these things that you can control that you have to control, but a certain percentage of your energy and mental equity and and all that is used for shit that fucks up the part that you're in control of, then like that's kind of where the issue is, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think it's just like this mental process. Like you probably do talk to like a sports therapist or like a mental coach or something. And then just have like a fucking race day plan. And like, honestly, it's just like literally committing. It's like just committing to a certain mindset of like, you get to the next race, you go, this amount of nerves is good. Once I get to this point, I'm fucking done. And then it's like, I think even just like making the commitment, like I'm going to do this. I'm going to think these thoughts when these thoughts come in, because all, that's what it is. Thoughts. It's just negative. hundred percent. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, what if this, what if the I don't only thing I'm what, scared about is not performing to where I think I should be able to perform. Yeah. That's the only thing. But then you just realize how retarded that is. Yeah. If I'm going to try as hard as I can anyways, right? Yeah. And and if if that is the goal, if you've got this like, I want to do the best that I can, but then you're like loading your backpack with a bunch of fucking rocks and trying to race Supercross with a bunch of rocks in your backpack because you care about racing Supercross, then it's like you're actually cooking yourself. <laughs> you're yeah. cooking yourself in a way, you know? For sure. But yeah, I honestly think it's like way easier to overcome than it's like just a, there would be somebody out there that could like get a bit of a light bulb for you, you know? Yeah. I need to get on that. Cause it'd be fucking sick to be able to <clears throat> fully enjoy the process, you know? I agree a hundred percent. If I can come out to like the last four or five races, whatever I can make and enjoy my time there, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, and I think it's probably like a good year for that. I agree too, because sense, I'll be coming know, back with like no, no pressure. expectations. Yeah. yeah. Like if I go there and whatever, I do shitty, like, okay, well, it's just because I, you know, I have min race or whatever. But if I go there and I kill it, like that's cool too, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's probably like a good chance to do it. You know, you just all the expectations are out the window. Like, I mean, I think that's why Chase didn't come back outdoors for a few rounds. Yeah. It was like, you know what? Fuck it. What's the- <laughs> Let's let this series get out like completely out of my realm of possibility of winning, and then I can just go out there and yeah. send it. You know, yeah, I'm just gonna sure. change this card real quick. Yeah, you're good. We're at three hours. Yeah. Holy um, shit! Be cool. That goes quick. What What's the gnarliest LCQ you've ever been in? What was the one where just the most shit went down, and you were like, "What the fuck are we up to, people?" Because there's got to be some good ones. Hmm. Dude, I'll be honest, man. There's nothing really right now like like fully sticks out. The first ever main event that I made was was pretty hectic, though. Um, this was like 2015. Indie Supercross. I had 
no expectations of making a main event. Like I wasn't even close in qualifying. Like I made the night show. I was like, fuck yeah, I was hyped. <laughs> and like I got like a decent start, dude. And <clears throat> and it was just a bunch of carnage. A bunch of people crashed. I rode fairly well, and all of a sudden, like my dad was helping me out at that point, and I ran. A, I he uh, I went by, and it said eighth on the pit board. I'm like, holy shit! And this was like halfway through. And there was a bunch of carnage going on behind me and in front of me, and I'm going got by guys who were down and hurt, and I went across the finish line, and I'm like, holy shit, dude, I just made my first main event. <laughs> so, yeah, like, that was probably the craziest thing. and um, So that was straight out of the heat. Yeah, yeah, and I was hanging out. You were just like, oh, this is easy, bro. <laughs> You're know, like, yeah. oh, I got this. <laughs> no problem, yeah. So uh, Justin Starling was was my boy, and or is my boy, and he – um he was helping me out a bit uh, at that time, kind of helping me with my riding and stuff like that. And he was staying in my house that week and he had finished right in front of me, way in front of me. And he was waiting after the finish line. And I remember I went over the finish line and like he had both of his hands up. Like I'll always remember that. And I was like, dude, that's, that's freaking cool. I was crying like a little baby. My dad started crying. and That was pretty cool. And it was Indy too, which is actually pretty close to where I live. So yeah. There, there yeah. Was a lot of, a lot of people there. Was, that's something I'll never forget. I mean, dude, like, even to this day, man, like, I still tear up if I make a main event in the 450 class. It's, like, just, like, something you never thought you'd get to. So every time it happens, like, it's still, like, surreal. It's it's insane. Like, like this year, making it at Indy was was really, really cool, too. It was it was rad. It must be, dude. Like I said, it's just that's an experience, like, money cannot buy. 100%. No matter how much money you got, no matter fucking, if you're not good enough, you ain't making it. Yeah. And like going across the finish line and just fucking giving her the berries after with your mechanic and seeing your family in the bleachers and you're just like hyping them up. It's yeah, that shit you can't buy. That's for sure. You're making me rethink my position on properties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty cool. <laughs> I, hey, I know you're cool. I'm kidding. I know, I'm kidding. I know you're cool. <laughs> no, I mean, dude, it must be fucking insane. Like, and I think that's what people love about the sport is like it's just so hard like even for the average dude i teared up at the end of world bets yeah you know like doing the last like roans came up we were like filming it and shit roans came up to me and i'm like fuck we did it you know like i was i was and i was scared of getting hurt too like because i have a fucking normal life yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and i was, like the track was so gnarly but yeah, i've heard cross the finish line and i was like i can't fucking believe it like hell yeah and it was because it was a whole year of training, yeah. building bikes, fucking buying random like, bikes to have to get practice bikes because I'm living here. And, you know, like so much goes into it. Yeah. But and it then was, like as soon as you accomplish like that main goal that you've wanted to accomplish forever, it's just like everything just hits you. Like you think about everything that just kind of happened over the last like six months to a year or whatever. And then you're just like, damn, like that's pretty cool. And then the motions hit you a little bit, but it's pretty cool. Was there any times where you've been close to just like not coming back for more? Um, well, you've kind of had a no. pretty good run to where like every year you've kind of wanted to go back. And yeah, pretty much every year I feel like I've gotten a bit better. Um, every year, I feel like every year I'm like, yeah, it's probably my last year. But then you like financially you do a little bit better and your results you do a little bit better. You start be- becoming a little bit more of a name in the sport. And you're like, well, why am I going to stop now? Like yeah. I'm kind of building and building and building so honestly dude right now like i don't really see an end anytime soon i mean if i can race and and be successful for another few years like i mean minus the fact that i puke and race day that's not fun but i mean i do love like the whole process of it Mm. do you have any i guess with the support that you've got now with the only fan stuff like do you have ideas of like okay this is how i'm going to improve or i can you know kind of keep building the program out in a way um well as long as i can keep only fans i mean that would be that would be the biggest thing right so i mean as long as i can keep just working my butt off in the off season and coming out with some good results and um i have so many more people that are helping me out this year too i have dude i probably have list of list of like 40 sponsors this year who are just Fuck, they cool just come up they just got my back name everybody Fuck, why not deal got them all on my phone do man. it bro i love that shit and then you got to tell me about old Billy too. Billy, Bill the 
Is that his name, the PRMX guy? Or oh, Julian. Jul- is that no? Who was he saying? Bill, the guy. Was there a Bill that you said? Oh, Bill, the- Bill who um comes to the track with me. Oh, maybe I just heard. Maybe I just heard Bill. <laughs> Who's wrong. Bill? Who was the guy that helped you out a bunch when you were riding for him? It was like the PM- PRMX guy. You were saying he's like an awesome. Bubba. Bubba. Bubba Paul. Bill. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I'll touch on that first. Yeah. Yeah. Bubba, we know Bubba Polly, right? He races. No, not, not well. Like, I don't, well, oh, I don't know. Well, him. yeah. Bubba's been racing Supercross as long as I have. And um, he's just very smart with business. He's He's got an amazing program. Now he actually has, uh, he's got Freddie Norn riding for him. Josh, okay. Josh Cartwright riding for him. It's the Mad Parts Kawasaki team now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I rode for the PRMX team for a long time, for like two or three years. And, uh, Bubba ended up giving me a, a phone call. I always rode out there. We've always been friends and offered me a good program, and it all went super, super good. He just got an amazing program, man. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts at, or, or abouts it. Um, he just runs a great program. He did everything that, that he said he was going to do and then some. And That's right, because we were talking about under-promise, over-deliver. Yeah, yeah. He's always done that for me, and... He still got my back if I need him with anything, if I need any parts of the races or fucking nails for my little screw gun or, or anything. He, he's always got my back. So, yeah, nothing but good things to say about them guys. I think that's cool too about the privateers is you guys yeah. kind of all are in yeah. it together. 100%. In a sense, yeah. you know. Like I got like, every every privateer's back as long as they're cool to me. Yeah. Anything that they need. Which that doesn't happen at the factory level. No. Like those guys are clearly against each other, not like they're trying <laughs> yeah. to fuck with each other. But you know what I mean? It's yeah. like there's a clear line like, yeah, we're over here. We're doing our own thing. You don't get anything from us. We don't want anything from you. It's just straight competition. Yeah. Where I feel like in the privateer pits, it's a little more like, fuck, I need a moose. I need this. I need that. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just right a clutch. Have you got a spec? How many clutches have you got? Oh, I got enough. Like, send me one, but you know. No, it, it's so sick. Like uh, last week and I made a post on my Instagram. Um. I left my easy up out here when I went back to Florida because I didn't have enough room in my van. So I made a post saying if anybody could bring it to Glendale and then PRMX was going to take it to me back to Florida. And Chris Howell, um, he's another privateer for, he's been racing forever. Good guy. He hit me up. He's like, Oh dude, I'll go drive over there and get it. And I'm thinking it's like right down the road. And he's like, yeah, it's like 35 minutes. I go grab it real quick. I'm like, dude, that's so sick. Like he's like, as long as you do, if you do that, just give me a little publicity um, on my little business. I was like, hell yeah, of course I'll do that. So, so many privateers just help everybody, man. It's it's sick. We all got each other's back. Yeah, no, it's definitely like a cool. It's a cool vibe, and yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of dudes that are just kind of like in it for the right reasons. You know? Yeah, and it's and it is cool to hear a guy like Bubba that. Like, yeah. As well as as much as you hear about like the good stories, you also hear a lot of bad stories too. Oh yeah, and it's like to have a guy like that that just, you know, you just publicly be like, man, over deliver. <clears throat> you know, he's great. Yeah, good guy. He's actually killing it this season too. He's made like all the shows. He had a big injury last year. Um, he actually had like a lot of his thumb cut off last year at Indy Supercross. Just Damn. a just a fluke thing and. His bar landed up, like right on his thumb, and like when it happened, it this whole tendon from here all the way down pulled out when it happened, and it was laying on the track. A, no, a tendon about this long was laying on the track, and um, what the fuck? Yeah, this was last year. And what did they do? Like, how did they? So they tried. They found his, the rest of his thumb on the track. And they tried reattaching it, but it didn't work. So now he's racing this whole year with like, uh, like half of a thumb. But he's fucking killing it, dude. Like he almost won that LCQ with that mutter, but he had a he got freezed, unfortunately. But <laughs> <laughs> frozen in time. <laughs> frozen in time. But yeah, yep. Nothing good to say about the whole program. That's right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, let, let's oh, yeah. let's read out these bad boys. We got a lot. I like a it. second. All right, perfect. All right. Obviously, OnlyFans. That's my big one. They have had my back for the last couple of years. They they hook it up big time and stoked to have their support. Galasso Landscaping. They are paying for my fuel for the entire season, that's which sick. is uh, amazing. I, I got them on my van. I actually have my whole rev, whole van wrapped and stuff this year, so I got them on that. And yeah, anything I can do for them is amazing. O'Neill Gear. Raddest guys out Dude, there. Dude, shout out to O'Neill. Yeah. Pat's a fucking dude. They're killing it. Everyone. Yeah. Mark, 
a ray now is working over there yeah that's true eh? yeah I, I, you know the thing i love about uh o'neill is they help the right people at the right time yeah totally you know like there'll be guys that'll you know someone will drop them they'll lose a ride whatever it is just seems like they have a knack for sponsoring dudes when they need it yep you know and like I, even even today like i i messaged a ray and i asked him i didn't remember if i had a discount code for like to give like sponsors or whatever so i have like one of my main sponsors was he was like yeah, i'm on o'neill's website and i was like hold on so i texted a ray and he's like he made a discount code for me uh today for 50 percent off just to help out one of my sponsors like that's so sick yeah super nice um tcd suspension they've had my back for forever man they they do some great work from from my suspension obviously uh williams motors works they uh they built me two motors this year so i actually almost ripped the whole shot in the the practice start mm. pretty much did but Almost got freezed again on that one, but <laughs> I saved it. Uh, Renew Plastic, a uh, couple of buddies of mine, uh, good people. Kennedy Cycles, who, who hooks me up with the bikes. Oh, man, dude, so many people. Extreme Post Frame, uh, LLC, Sky Powell, that dude uh, helped me out a ton this year. HL Site Services, uh, Printworks Apparel, Momentum Commercial Capital, uh, Bronson Compound. It's a sick little compound down in Florida, a little private track. Um, they're hooking it up this year. They got a rad little spot. Um, uh, Eli Ortloff with uh, NetCorp um, hooking it up. Backyard Designs, Blood Lubricants, uh, Millmark. They're making, they actually made me some custom, um, Jesus, draw a blank, starting blocks. Oh, like with yeah. my name on them and stuff like that. So he's going to start promoting those. And, Sick. Yeah, super rad. Um, 60 helmets, uh, fun, my rays, Phoenix handlebars, Maxis tires. Um, man, dude, I have so many people, man. If you're listening to this, you know who you are, man. Thank you guys so much. No, nah, it's awesome, man. No, nah, it's just cool that you're able to put together such a good program and you're able to, you know, yeah. make it, make a decent little living and just enjoy yeah. riding supercross. I'm pretty lucky, dude. It's, uh, living the life right now. So I'm definitely not taking it for granted. That's for sure. And so what's next over the next little bit for you? So, potentially getting this screw removed in my leg tomorrow, and then if that happens, stay out here for another week or so and do a little bit more PT. I'm putting a little bit of weight bearing on it now, so um, working as hard as I can on trying to get this range of motion back ASAP so I can get back on the bike. And How painful is that? Oh, my God, dude. <sighs> like... I would rather my la my ankle be sideways like it was. I was in way less pain at that point than mm -hmm. when I am every day doing PT. So, Mr. or Dr. Steve Navarro, if you're listening to this, fuck you, man. <laughs> 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 I love that guy though, man. He's 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 a uh, He's, he's a GI. Yeah, he's killing it for me. He's like He's like you can go to any other PT guy, but um or he's like if if the normal guy came to me for PT, they probably would never come back. Yeah. Because it's extremely painful, but he'll also get you back way quicker. Yeah. Um but yeah, um hopefully go back to Florida next week, go down there for Daytona and have some fun and he's going to put me on a program to try to get all the um the range of motion back in my leg. And once that happens, get back on the bike, hopefully get a month on the bike and start racing again. Yeah. That'd be sick. That's the plan. Will hopefully. you stay you, can you see yourself staying on Kaui for a while? Is the contingency just that much better? Um, it is, yeah. So the Well, you just like the bikes as well. I do like the bikes too, yeah, for sure. Um I get support through that Kennedy's uh cycle dealership. They they give me a very good deal on a couple of bikes. But not opposed to switching brands. But yeah, definitely the the contin the contingency is very good on Kawasaki. Like, I mean, if you make a make a night show, you get paid. It's the only OEM I think that pays night show. How much is it? Three. It's only three hundred bucks. But but you get your entry. You back, make a basically. main event. You make five hundred on top of the three hundred. So you make a main event. You make eight hundred. You get top fifteen. You get a thousand. So a thousand on top of the three hundred. So I mean, you're making pretty good money just in Kawasaki contingency if you can just be a main event guy. In yeah. two fifty class, I was a main event guy every weekend. But um, four fifty class is a little bit tougher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I fucking loved it. You're a legend. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on, dude, so much. Like like I said, we've been trying to do this for a little while, man. It's uh, I'm glad I'm not here for therapy and we were able to get this done. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, and it's just fun to smack a couple of modellos and Fuck, just yeah. sit and talk shit about racing and everything. I'm pumped for you, like genuinely stoked for you. You're a, you're a super cool guy and uh, you're like very unique in our sport. And I feel like you're, you're 
bring in a billion dollar business or something across. <laughs> Not many people can say that they've done that. It's it's insane, man. I'm stoked for you too, man. Seeing your podcast blow up of I've been listening to your stuff for years, man, and seeing uh, the progress has been awesome. No, I appreciate it, man. Hey, it's just like slugging away. One one good guest like yourself. Uh, Both just that. hustling, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. We'll, uh, this might be the last time we do this. We'll yep. definitely do it again. For sure. Legend. Later, dude. Thanks, brother. Yeah, that was sick. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.